circadian rhythms are circadian rhythms, man. You're not going to exactly. muck with that too much, but <laughs> yeah, set, you know what I mean. And the body, the body is happy where it is. Um, and then we decide to invent planes and yeah, <laughs> yeah. electric light. Yeah, in Australia. Yeah, you're lucky to get yes, you're lucky to get anything above dial-up now. I think I, mean, just... <laughs> I still have a modem that goes. Grr, 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 yeah, grr, yeah. Like that. Oh, classic. <laughs> Two hours. Yeah, it's crazy. Eh? <laughs> I was just checking, with... <laughs> but we're not. But I can promise you, we won't edit much at all. Like there won't be. <laughs> but but no, it's, it's always yeah. such a pleasure talking to you guys. I've, I've done quite a few podcasts, and, yeah, but yeah, yeah you <laughs> so easy to to, to awesome. talk. It's like a conversation. Thank you. That means, so, it means uh, a lot to us as well. Thank you. Yeah, and I can definitely, it. I can definitely see the difference between now and last time. Oh, thanks, oh, but cool. yeah, 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 thanks, yeah, yeah, really. yeah. It's so much more polished, like it's like smooth. Yeah, Thank really. You, yeah, yeah, really yeah appreciate that. But we're really, really thankful. Cool. We're saying this at the start. We're really thankful for you, like for being one of the first guys and agreeing to it because that really yeah. helped us a lot. You know what I mean? Just um, totally. Just so thanks yeah. for being part of our journey. You know, it's really, really oh, awesome. Sure. It's really of course, it. no, for sure, enough. I mean, yeah, yeah, no, no doubt about it at all. And I hope we get to catch up soon, Gareth. Yeah, totally. But I hope for we get sure. to do the. You don't no. understand how great that that but, last uh, was. It was. It was. I was just like, Gareth should have been yeah, here. I know you could be, oh. but I was like, oh, Gareth oh. should have been here. No, no. But I'm gonna. What's up, Gareth? <laughs> Great guys, how are you doing, my man? <laughs> um, flipping awesome, my man. How's the day been? Yeah, it's really, really good. Thanks, bud. Uh, nice day today in London. Looking to forward to getting outside after our chat. Yeah, and how about yours, man? How's it been? Yeah, pretty awesome, man. I, I was wondering how your experiment's going with sitting under a tree every day. Well, yesterday was day one, and it was yeah. really good fun. And... Um, yeah, so far I guess it's not quite an experiment because it's only been one day, but it was a really cool experience, just like sitting under a tree, closing your eyes, breathing fresh oxygen and listening to what was going on in the world in the park in Greenwich yesterday. And uh, I'm looking forward to going outside again today and, and you know, exploring round two. Yeah, it's so good to do, hey, just reconnect with nature. And our guest this week is... Daryl Edwards, uh, actually round two with him. And he's someone that's certainly uh, not shy to climb up a tree and have a bit of fun and and uh, explore, uh, you know, these kinds of activities. And uh, it's really cool to have him back on again because both you and I, you know, really enjoyed our first chat with him. And he's just like a wealth of knowledge. And um, I actually ended up meeting up with him in, in Brisbane uh, for a chat and I was just blown away again by his like total um, deep understanding of of movement and, and movement as medicine and uh, health and, and, and paleo specifically uh, nutrition and um, and all of these reasons was you know prompted us to obviously get him back on on the show and we were really proud and happy to to have him back on uh, just at the time of his uh, new book launch, which is really exciting as well. Um, but once again, he touched on so many interesting things uh, in terms of why movement is such an essential component to our overall health, mental, physical, chemical, everything, uh, and not just something that we compartmentalize into a part of our day to make us feel a little bit better about sitting all day long. So he also gets into subjects of play and laughter and fun and it's just stuff that we just generally are quite disconnected uh, to or from and uh, it's just really refreshing to hear this uh, approach that he has hey yeah absolutely and the cool thing is is uh, i've known daryl for a long time now we actually used to work together in our investment banking days and i remember when he first started and you know like he would always post these workouts on his his facebook page as well as his website and i would literally be the first one to kind of check it out and try it out and i used to try it out like in the gym all these cool exercises like bear crawls and crab walks and <laughs> all these cool like 
bunny hops and jumps and stuff <laughs> like that. And I sort of used to coerce my my gym buddies into training with me and, you know, make them come and do these sessions uh, before we'd go and like hit the weights or whatever. And they'd always like, you know, they would come because, you know, they, they kind of wanted to be involved, but they would always look at me like, <laughs> Gareth, you're a little bit crazy doing all these sort of animal moves, but they were so <laughs> good. Do you know what I mean? And we, we would feel it the next day, like in our bodies, you know, you'd be like, oh wow what was that like you know like I'm really feeling it in like my sort of like hip or whatever it was and it's because you're doing these (laughs) moves which you don't normally do and you're sort of touching parts of your body you know that you you don't necessarily uh, use in everyday life so they were so good for that reason you know what I mean they you're just sort of hitting fibers and muscles and joints and ligaments and whatever that you don't normally explore when you do normal exercise and for sure the big thing about it was, is that it was a lot of fun. You know, it was like we were being kids again and we, we were doing them with a smile on our face. It was enjoyable. You kind of, you know, even though my mates like maybe didn't want to do it at the start, at the end of the session, they were kind of like, oh, damn, is this finished? You know, so that was the cool thing about it. And that's what I think is really important about exercise is the enjoyment part, you know, because often it seems like a chore and people and that's why people maybe don't want to do it and that's daryl's whole sort of ethos is fun is play you know and i can totally resonate with that and it was also you know so so that was you know that was my experience of it and i like kind of urge everyone to have a go at um you know what daryl is sort of proposing for us to do in terms of movements and yeah. just in terms of the chat it was also nice to to have a good long chat with Daryl because I felt that we were able to go a lot deeper, hey, and just understand like how he thinks that little bit more, don't you think, Craig? Yeah, for sure. You know, he don't he doesn't only um, explore new movement patterns and his physical body. He he's also explored a lot of um, deep um, emotional connections uh, with uh, himself and why he's doing this and what is his real purpose and passion and drive. And, you know, he really has found um, a place for himself that he's, he's truly, truly excited about what he's doing and he's, he's exciting other people. And that that's giving him like this amazing passion. And he, he discusses a story of a mentor that he had uh, who unfortunately recently passed away. And it's amazing how just connecting with someone uh, and one person in your life can really just spark this idea that you should just stick to your passion and not think and not care about what other people think and just have this real excitement for what you're doing. And he totally, totally uh, kept that going and is and and is being true to this mentor of his. And uh, and he's totally going to uh, continue this passion that he had. And and I think. Um, yeah, that's, that's one of the big things that really came out in the story of, it was this, um, real sincere drive for what he's doing now. Hey, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you, you hear it and you see it when he talks about this interaction that he had with this man and the one line that he's, he tells us that he was uh, told by the guy was do not lose your passions and, Daryl just kind of like sparked up when he said that, you know, and you could see that like for him, it was an aha moment. And I th- I personally feel like Daryl has always been really, really passionate, but it's a good reminder for us all, you know, to, to not lose those passions that we maybe had when we were younger and, or even new passions, which come about in our later years, you know, we must hold on to those and we must explore those because it does it makes us happy i find and it gives us that bit more sense of purpose and you'll find that it makes people gravitate towards you because they can feel that cool energy that you're sort of giving off because you are living your passion and you're doing something that's really enjoyable to yourself and that was a really cool part of the chat and a really cool message. 
And um, yeah, I think it's uh, a good a time as any now to find out what it's like for Daryl Edwards to be ridiculously human. Cool stuff. Good morning, Daryl Edwards. It's uh, nice to see your face again, buddy. How's your day treating you so far? Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. Recovering from jet lag, um, but um, I'm actually feeling feeling pretty good this morning. Uh, that's cool. Yeah, I know yeah. We, we've actually we've been on the chat for a little bit now. Actually, just having a little bit of pre-chat, and you're definitely a little bit tired at the start, but I can feel the energy's back. Energy's up. And yeah, you're, I'm you're, energized. You've uh, <laughs> you've been standing up for a bit, so that's good. Um, but yeah, yeah just uh, thanks, man. It's uh, you're our first uh, returning guest, which is really really cool. We're we're really thankful for that, man. We we loved the first session we had with you. Uh, that was actually episode three. This is going to be episode 28. Uh, we, we actually, we still surprised ourselves that, you know, we're over six months into it and just, it's just been like such an amazing journey so far. So, you know, we, we're just really pumped to have you on for a second time. Obviously, you know, this is going to be a little bit different. We know a lot about you already um, and you have so much more stuff to still share, obviously, but there's, your life has been super exciting, you know, even since we chatted six months ago. Um so yeah, like you know, even, and you and Craig actually met up in Brisbane, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, which was really really cool t- for you guys, you know. So yeah, and what what how was that actually? You know, Craig, I didn't I don't think we've even really spoken about it a hell of a lot. Well, uh, it was really awesome. I got uh, lifted up uh, upon high by this big guy and uh, <laughs> made it seem way too easy. But a uh, really really great uh, uh, event actually. Um, put on by Leah Williamson uh, from the Low Carb Conversations uh, and really, really great event. It's the first sort of event I'd been to like that. And uh, Daryl was uh, the, the, the main speaker there uh, on the night and uh, he just did a, a rip-roaring roaring job. So um, really knowledgeable uh, and really interactive with uh, with everyone, which is really cool to see. How, how did you go that night, Daryl? Yeah, no, it was it was great. I mean, it was like a, a dinner, sort of like an after-dinner talk conversations with Daryl Edwards kind of thing uh, mm. and um no it was fantastic great food great location and um I think people you know lots of interesting questions so yeah. it's pretty much like whatever you want to ask uh, about nutrition and living a healthy lifestyle um anything that I know I'm prepared to to share with you so that's always really interesting it you know you feel challenged you you feel that you have to really consider what your your point of view is you know, um, it's not rehearsed, it's not prepared. It's just like, mm. let's just have a conversation. Yeah. And, I, and, and that's probably the most, most uh, rewarding way to, to have a discussion around living a healthier lifestyle. So, yeah, it was great. It was great to meet you, kind of fireman carrying you <laughs> for, for, for a photo opportunity. Yeah, that yeah was great. Was cool. yeah, you know, yeah. one thing I was really surprised about is that, um, number one, the, the one thing was that, the age, the sort of average age of everyone there was not young. I was kind of expecting everyone to be really young and like, you know, I'm all into this paleo thing or whatever it is. But quite a number of the people there were like, let's say, a bit older. And Mm -hmm. they had some really, really good, concise questions and some difficult questions. uh, And and they were very knowledgeable. So that was really quite interesting. People are really interested in this this whole topic. Yeah, I suppose when you once you've lived a bit of life, um, you know, once you're presented with challenges, whether they're physical challenges or, or health challenges, that's when you, you start seeking, you know, you know, you want solutions. Uh, and, you know, if you're really young and, and vibrant and fit and healthy and never really had any issues, you know, why would you question the path that you're on? You know, everything seems to be working. Everything's fine. So I, I, I believe you probably, if there was a, a median age, where people do gravitate towards living a paleo lifestyle, it probably is going to be a little bit later in life because it, it makes sense um, for many um, because they've probably tried lots of different interventions with with part you know varying degrees of success. Um, and when you realise there is probably a way that we should be living which is aligned with our with our nature, um, you want to continue on that on that pathway. So. So, yeah, so it doesn't it doesn't surprise me that much to be honest. In all of my yeah. years working within this within this industry, uh, you don't see too many. You know, I'm always, you know, I always just wish to myself. I wish I found 
this lifestyle when I was in my early 20s. Do you know what mm. I mean? I wish I knew about this when I was in my late teens. Like, oh my goodness, yeah. the time <laughs> when you when you can uh, best benefit from from living a healthy a healthy lifestyle. So I had to suffer with um, poor health before I I was like I need some I need to find something quick, and I don't want to mm. be on medication for the rest of my life um, if if I if I can help it. You know, yeah. so that's what but, it took for me. But also, don't you think that like if you like really think about it simply, that it almost makes sense that that age group is a bit older because those people have lived probably in that generation when things were like less processed and you kind of you know you did things more simply and you ate together and all these sort of things so it kind of makes sense if you think of it that way mm-hmm. yeah i think that i think there's some truth in that as well you you can there's some nostalgia around going back to basics and 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 simpler times and i suppose every generation has that right you mm-hmm. know we 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 often look back you know my parents would have done the same at my age like oh things are better things were simpler easier life you know uh, but at the same time, um, that isn't always the case either. I think it's we have rose-colored spectacles because, mm. you know, for example, thinking about smoking. You know, when I was going out to a nightclub, yeah. people were smoking. You go for a meal, people were smoking in restaurants. It's you true. know, there was a time where seatbelts weren't mandatory when I was growing up. Yeah. There were lots of there were lots of things actually that we have had significant amount of progression in, in terms of health and safety and. So it wasn't all great and amazing going back in time. And, um, and even t- taking into account the paleo lifestyle, it's, it's about taking the best, best of the past and, and, and blending that with the best of the present rather than just thinking, oh, everything was just great back then. Why don't we just go back to a, a better time? Yeah, some things were better. Some things definitely weren't. <laughs> so, yeah. So, <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's what we need. We need to, we need to have balance around you know taking you know sort of almost a pick and mix of the best of the past and the the best of the present and considering what we can get from the future and what we want from our future that's what we should be aiming for yeah Yeah, that's a good good point like you want to constantly be learning through science and when new things come along be open to the fact that this is actually better even though it's different to what you may have always done in theory and that could be better and be open to that and constantly be evolving that and mixing the current state of things with the past and finding that happy medium, I guess. Like, Yeah, finding a happy medium, always questioning, always challenging, um, you know, not being so swayed that you're like, you know, um, yeah. it's almost emotional, you know, like one day, oh, I want to do this next day. Oh, no, I'm, I'm so over that. That was so, you know, March 2018. <laughs> you know, I, I've got, you've got to, I've got to move on, you know, like, uh, you know, you, 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 there's got to be something that you, uh, that you've got a rock solid belief in a particular direction that you want to, to go in, uh, and, and then, you know, in a particular pathway, um, and you may be swayed slightly along that pathway. Uh, and hopefully you don't find something that goes actually everything you've been doing everything you've ever known is a, has been a complete waste of time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But you've got to yeah. be open. You still got to be kind of open and have a listening out for, for something that may be telling you, actually, you know what? You may need to reconsider what you're doing now. So, mm-hmm. so, uh, uh, um, and I think that's also a danger for many of us. You know, we have to be aware of cognitive, you know, uh, dissonance and confirmation bias that we are constantly seeking what we what we know and what we feel comfortable with, and we need to we need to face discomfort in all areas of life, on occasion, because uh, through adversity, through being challenged, um, you know, we're either going to be thinking, okay, right, yeah, yeah, I know I'm being challenged, but I'm even more, I have even more conviction now based on this challenge when I see that this challenge actually isn't something that that destabilizes my my point of view. Because it's very, very weak evidence, or you know, it's just an opinion. There's no fact there, or it may be, oh my goodness, this evidence is overwhelming. I have to reconsider my position because yeah. the only thing that I'm holding on to here is is just a belief, not um, you know, not because it's just anecdotal, not because it's actually been a, a true or factual experience. Yeah. yeah. So I, I often talk about that uh, when I'm giving presentations. 
when I'm discussing some of the evidence that I've that I use to to uh, present what I believe to be factual. But uh, I always state to my audience, you know, don't just take my word for it. Do your own research. Look at my citations. Look at the source that I'm presenting. And you know, you if you re- if this is something that you really want to take on board, then you have to question even what I'm telling you to do. Just because I may appear to be an expert in a particular area doesn't mean that I'm infallible. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, yeah. um, so I think it's healthy to be a you know a healthy skeptic um, and to look at whatever evidence is in front of you and go well. That sounds interesting, but what what's the contrarian point of view to that? You know, is that equally as interesting? Um, is the evidence how strong is your evidence that you're presenting, etc., etc., etc.? So I think anyone anyone would do much better having that approach to um, looking at information presented to them. Totally, I think sure. I think what you say there is like so poignant. Like you know, people. I guess often maybe go through life with kind of blinkers on, you know, and they, they just kind of believe in what they want to. And if someone has a different opinion, they'll go, nah, you know what, <laughs> I'll just kind of carry on. And, and it's really, like you said, it's really powerful when you can accept something that challenges your way of thinking and mm. then go, ah, you know what, actually that's right. And that's a, that's a way, that's a, like a whole thing about growth. You know, you're actually growing when mm. you can do stuff like that. Um, yes, for sure. That's a very good. That's a very good point. And you know what was so interesting? Now that you just said that about citations, as I was reading up about uh, some of the stuff um, which we'll go through just now. Um, one of the things that you wrote in your in your kind of new in your latest book, uh, and what, sorry, not you wrote, but one of the citations was about, I think it was about uh, muscle uh, gaining muscle and how you don't actually have to use weights and um, there was another way it was just I, I thought, I'm trying to I'm I'm literally can't remember what it is now but that completely challenged me I was like ah oh, I didn't actually think that this was another way of sort of gaining muscle um, oh was it uh, I, <clears throat> isometric contractions it was something uh, was, like that yeah but yeah. yes yeah so basically um yeah so there's there are there are different ways to contract contract muscle yeah and and so um you know and often when we're thinking about building muscle you know we think about okay if i'm going to be doing a bicep curl for example you know there are there are two ways i can i can you know manipulate the weight so yeah. you know i can extend the arm lengthen the arm you know and then i can kind of bring the arm closer to the body and then that's i'm kind of contracting the bicep yeah so uh, so there's the kind of um eccentric contraction which is where you're lengthening, uh, lengthening the the arm. Yeah. Uh, um, um, you know, there's lots of different types of tra- contractions available. And then there's one called the isometric contraction. So if you're doing, say, a plank, you're at the top of a push-up position, and you're holding that position, and there isn't any movement, you're just keeping yourself stable. Uh, you you have muscular contraction, yeah. and you're supporting your body weight. And that's a, also another way to to build muscle, to build to build strength. Many martial artists use this technique. Uh, there's something called a horse stance, where you you basically pretend you're sitting in a chair and you hold that position for significant periods of time, and you you know your muscles are working really it's so tiring. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Your muscles are working really hard. So there are just you know, as with any many things, there are there are different ways. There are there are alternative ways for you to achieve, you know, to reach a, a particular destination. Totally. And we. Feel, and you know we forget about we forget about that often. You know when we think about um, about science, when we think about you know it's easier to be reductionist in our approach. It's mm. easier to focus on what we believe to be really important rather than being holistic. And if you always think about the a holistic approach, then you'll recognise that there are many ways of achieving um, you know a similar a similar result. So, and it depends on what you're aiming for. So if I was thinking about, I want to get the biggest muscles possible, you know, I would train differently to wanting to be as strong as possible. Yeah. So they're completely different ways to train. You know, if you want to be as strong as possible, then actually you don't want to be necessarily gaining muscle mass. You want to be maximizing what the muscle fibers can do. So you want to keep your, you know, your body weight down and in increasing your strength and power to weight ratio. So that's what you're aiming for. So if I was a weightlifter, you know, that's why they have weight categories. 
because they want to see if you're not less than 90 kilos, what can you do at less than 90 kilos? And you want to get stronger, maintain your same weight. If I was a bodybuilder, you know, I may just want to get as big as possible. That's yeah. what's, that's what's celebrated, right? So you train, you train differently, you know, hypertrophy, which is a way of developing muscle size yeah. is completely different to maximal, maximal strength. Um, somebody who wants muscular endurance where you want to be able to do something for longer periods of time in terms of muscular um, contraction, you know, so somebody doing, I don't know, like 500 press-ups, <laughs> you know what I mean, is <laughs> a completely different type of work effort to somebody who can lift, do one press-up with, you know, 10 people on on their back, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, it, it, it's you just realize there's a there's a whole universe of how we can manipulate our bodies and how we can get our bodies to be either stronger or bigger or smaller or yeah. leaner or faster or you know uh, better endurance um yes anyway and, i'm and, kind and, of going off and, tangent no, and, and 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 what you say is like really relevant as well and i also think like often we overcomplicate things you know like and i'm just thinking back to say when i when i did like bodybuilding one of the toughest workouts for me ever was a posing session so like you would go mm. into like you know like the studio and you'd flip and go in front of the mirrors and you'd just be posing but most of the time you're literally just flexing like your muscles as hard you mm. can and you would be yes. dripping and i often thought yes. i often <laughs> thought you know what, almost everyone that trains weights should just come and do a posing session twice a week and they'll probably get a better workout than they do by hitting the weights for, for an hour, you know. Yeah, that's a really good, I mean, that's a really good point. And I suppose it's because, again, you train, you, you, you are what you train, you become what you do. And so the fact that you're training, you know, I don't know, like three sets of eight reps, you know, uh, 65% or 70% of your, your maximal strength, you know, the, the, the kind of, you know, two minutes rest in between each rep, you know, the standard kind of bodybuilding way to train, uh, which works really well. It's proven to work really well, which is why people do it. As soon as you try to do something else. So if you, if you probably had gone, I don't know, for a hundred meter sprint, or you tried to do yoga, yeah. Or you try to, you know, flex in the mirror for a long period of time. Your body's like, what the heck is this? There's, there's confusion. Your muscles are, are not adapted to that. Totally. Um, and, and I think that's the reason why I, I train the way I do now, where I'm constantly looking to challenge myself. I'm constantly looking to not do the same things over and over again, um, unless they're proven to be really beneficial. Yeah. So, yeah, the bodies are so adaptable yeah. um, and flexible. And, um, and they, they like to take a particular form. They, you know, we're very efficient. The body's very efficient at saying, you know, um, just make use of what's useful. And if it isn't, I don't need it. You know, if I don't go for, if I'm in a bed for a few weeks, the body will start to lose muscle mass because it will say, why am I maintaining this additional, you know, uh, muscle mass, uh, bodily tissue that I don't need, you know, I yeah. don't need to be. Uh, you know, being involved in locomotion or manipulating my physical frame. So I'll just waste away. That, that's what will happen. Um, if we train, the body says, I need to be stronger. I need to be better able to do this. Let me build more muscle tissue. Let me make my bones more dense. So that's when you realize the body's constantly in flux, <clears throat> yeah. constantly adapting to its environment. Um, then you realize how powerful our ability is to provide continuous stimulus and inputs to our to our physiology yeah, you know yeah. that's why that's why exercise is, uh, and being and being physically active is so powerful and so potent uh, and medicine is because of this fact you yeah. know our bodies do are shaped by our environment um including what we can do as well as the things that we can't control you know <laughs> yeah Gosh, the, the human body is is just so incredible, and and obviously the three of us are are very much interested in in the way we move and um, the science behind movement and the human body and health, etc. And so obviously this conversation can go many way, many ways, and obviously we want to start somewhere and end somewhere with some kind of coherent uh, direction because you're such an interesting guy, you you do so much, so. 
I'd love us to just have a chat a little bit about the difference between exercise and movement, because it seems like these days you're hearing the two terms being used sort of independently from one another. And, mm. and perhaps you can like just sh shed some light on that and we can sort of make our way, may, way down from there. Yeah. So, so yeah, movement um, has definitely become like a bit of a buzzword, you know, uh, you know, I don't like exercise myself. I, I, I love movement. Um, <laughs> so, so movement, but strictly speaking, movement is anything that the body does changing from one position to the next. So that can mean the blink of an eye. That can mean involuntary movement, like the heart beating. You know, I can't control that. It, ha it happens, you know, whilst I'm living, it happens. Um, you know, me breathing, you know, my, my, my rib cage expanding um, as, I, as I breathe, to purposeful movements, like me deciding, okay, I'm going to go for a sprint, me deciding I'm going to go for a walk. Uh, and so all the things that I can do physically from almost being, you know, uh, completely stationary and static right through to the most vigorous of movements is movement right there, opposite ends of the spectrum. Mm. Exercise is basically uh, a subset of movement. So you're looking at something which is structured, uh, which tends to be programmed, which tends to be, um, you know, definitely optional. You don't have to exercise. Uh, it tends to be rhythmic, so repetitive motions. And it tends to be, you know, we consider some sort of goal uh, at, at the end of that, you know, getting fitter, looking better, something along along those lines. Mm. Um, and even within, even within movement and exercise, you know, you've got other categories, such as physical activity. So physical activity could be right. anything from not sitting you become physically active. So from standing to walking to running to then thinking about exercise, um, um, and then you maybe focus on training, which is where you, you definitely have a particular sets of goals that you're aiming for and objectives that you're aiming for. <clears throat> so they are used interchangeably, those terms, uh, but they do have specific applications. And we do need to be aware that sometimes that confusion and interchange of interchangeable aspects of those terms can make it confusing for people. For example, some people can say, you don't need to exercise, you know, you just need to move. That's a, that's a kind of a classic mm. quote I, I often hear on social media, you know, exercise is overrated, just move, just go for a walk and it's fine. Well, it depends on what you're doing for your, you know, day to day living. If you're at a desk for eight hours a day, or 10 hours a day, if you commute on a, on a you know, on a tube, on a local underground, London underground for an hour each way, um, and then you literally, you know, uh, rock up to your front door by getting a car and then walk up the, walk up your driveway mm -hmm. and then you sit on a cu couch when you get home for three hours watching TV, then you could argue movement isn't enough for you. <laughs> yeah yeah of course um, that, that little bit of movement you got you had walking to the drive you know to your car mm. walking into the tube station it's not it's not enough do you know what i mean getting up from your desk you know to go to the toilet not enough movement there even though you have moved yeah. so in that instance exercise is is a great supplement for someone who's relatively sedentary throughout most of their day uh, so in an ideal world if we were thinking about what our ancestors would do, they'd be moving significantly throughout the day because they need to obtain food, they need to build shelter, they need to protect their environment. You know, they need to be aware of being, you know, not being predated. So they need to, <laughs> they need to be aware of the fact that they could be eaten at any moment, you know. So, so that's what we would have to have done in the past. In the 21st century, we pretty much can survive without being physically active. You know, we can order food at the click of a, a mouse, we can pretty much satisfy our, you know, uh, uh, basic instincts, you know, by using technology to do so, you know, by everything being very convenient for us. So there isn't a requirement to move. Um, you know, we don't even need to, we don't even need to move to reproduce. Do you know what I mean? We can, mm. that will be done, test tube, yeah. you know, you know what I mean? So we, we don't have to do to move to procreate 
to uh, to um, you know to get food, obtain food sources, to build our shelters, etc., etc., etc. So exercise is a 21st century, or it's a modern adaptation, yeah. a modern requirement because we don't move as much as we used to. So I would say we need to be really careful about how we prescribe, you know, solutions to individuals who are physically inactive. You know, movement isn't going to be enough. Uh, if we just say to people, oh, just go for a walk every now and again, and that'll be fine. No, there's far more we need to do to, to make use of the human body uh, as it was designed uh, to move. So uh, there is a place for exercise. There is a place for movement uh, to being, for being more physically active and reducing sedentary time, which is probably the most important aspect mm -hmm. of all that messaging. We, know we need to reduce the amount of time that we're physically inactive and we can use anything from being more physically active, moving more, mm. exercising more, <laughs> uh, to achieve, you know, to achieve that goal. Yeah, I, I was uh, having a little think about uh, our chat early on this morning. And, and one of the things that actually stuck in my head from our, our last conversation was you talking about exercises and that it's normally like around a certain amount of time as well. You're like, you'll block out a bit of time in your day and you're like, cool, I'm going to go exercise. Yeah. And that's kind of another way i guess of categorizing exercise and then also what you were saying you're like yo with moving you can kind of do it whatever you want and at different times of the mm. day you know what i mean so i was busy making my oats this morning and i was doing like air squats and i'm like yeah daryl's <laughs> gonna approve of this <laughs> and, and yeah it, i mean it's, yeah. it's a great way to find you know um you can always find the time to do a few air squats, right? Yeah. <laughs> so you may not be able to find the time to, to spend an hour in, in the gym. You know, you may not be able to carve out an hour in your day to, to go to the gym. And then you've got to get there as yeah. well for many of us. Then you've got to get changed and look, you know, make sure you've got the right gear on. <laughs> look the <laughs> you know, so, so if you don't have that time, you may find taking out two to five minutes at various points. You know, you're waiting for the coffee to brew. I can do something in, in, a, in, in a few minutes around that time. Those minutes will accumulate throughout the day, and the accumulation of that will be 30 yeah. minutes or 40 minutes of, of, of exercise, you know, of being more physically active, you know, of breaking a sweat, of, you know, raising your, your heart, elevating your heart rate, getting out of breath, you know. So, so um, yeah, I think it's, it's important to recognize that we just need to be more physically active. We do need to, to increase intensity of our physical activity at different times of the day, not just at set times, because if you do it and you put it in your diary, something more important may crop up, you know, and you'll, and you'll go, okay, I'll do it tomorrow. Totally. I'll do it in a couple of days when I've got a bit more time. So I'm always looking at ways of how I can, you know, I, yeah, the, I, I take give you a prime example. The other day I was uh, on my way somewhere, I had an appointment, um, so I knew exactly what time the bus was going to be arriving. You know, I checked on, checked on my phone when the bus was going to arrive. And I, I got outside like two, you know, two minutes before the bus would arrive. And I saw, I could see the bus. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to wait until this bus is not too far from this stop. And I'm going to try and I'm going to sprint to the next bus stop. <laughs> and, and, um, and I was literally like racing. You know, it's probably only, you know, it's probably about 300 meters or so. <laughs> uh, and I literally sprinted flat out, kind of weaving in and out, people on the on the pavement. Um, and I, you know, literally the the but there was a point where the bus driver was like could could see me, you know, people on the bus could see me. And um I, you know, I was kind of coughing and spluttering at the end and, and I probably hadn't run that fast. I, I can't remember the last time I ran that quickly. <clears throat> but it was it felt great. You know, I was just wow. like, wow, I felt, you know, it woke me up for sure. Daryl, I'm, so, I'm, sure that, I'm sure that people were thinking, Flip, there goes Usain Bolt. He's, he's, yeah, he's, yeah. <laughs> he's running away What's from the, the, the media or something. <laughs> so, oh, classic. Um, yeah, so it was, but you know, it was like, I, I'm constantly looking for those opportunities to, to, to move. Um, and it makes my day interesting. It means I don't have to necessarily think about exercise, but I can think about more, more movement. Um, and the fact that I was actually, I set myself a challenge, I sprinting against the bus yeah. <laughs> uh meant that there was something um tangible about that about that as well yeah. so i wasn't just running for the sake of running 
Yeah. You know, I, I had to push myself because if I didn't, I wasn't, if I wasn't going to get that bus, I was going to be late for my appointment. So it was all kind of, I made it as real world as possible um, by, by, you know, focusing on that kind of scenario of, of making sure, hey, you know, this is a, there's a risk here. I may miss this bus. Yeah. So I better yeah. be. <laughs> <laughs> the, I think awesome. there, there was, there yeah. was a nice <laughs> sense of achievement, wasn't there, once you beat it? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I was like, okay, I'm not going to be late. You know, I've just got to probably wipe a few beads of sweat off my brow. But, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it felt, it felt good. Uh, and, you know, we just need to be uh, aware that our body, you know, we don't want to be our bodies to be sitting in idle all the time. You know, like it's like having a car and you just, you know, you, you can switch the car on and it sounds great. You hear, oh, you know, the, oh, yeah, wow, isn't that fantastic? And then the engine idles and it's like, nah, you know, you know that there's, you know, there's far more. Yeah. yeah. This beast of an engine than it just idling. And, and so we often as human beings are constantly idle mode. Idle. And, um, you know, even though we're moving, you know what I mean? So yeah. that, that car is still, that car is still running. You know, it's, it's working. The engine's running, it's moving, uh, but it's still idling. And, and humans do exactly the same oftentimes. And we go for, you know, go, oh, this, I just walked a couple of flights of stairs, you know. Yeah. I did my bit for the day. You know, we feel good about it. It's like, nah, mm. there's, there's a lot more that we could be doing and we should be doing um, of varying degrees of intensity. You know, so those of us who decide, okay, I don't know, I'm picking yoga out as an example, but if I decide, you know, yoga is going to be my way to become physically active and to become fit and to become capable, again, it only caters for a subset of our movement capability. Yeah. You know, um, our heart rate is only going to be uh, elevated to a certain degree. You know, our body is only going to be strengthened based on the fact that we can hold and maintain poses. We can become more flexible, more mo mobile, because that's what yoga will do, um, you know, disproportionately to other aspect components of fitness. Yeah. So if I choose that movement modality, I'll become very good at yoga. I'll cool. become very good mm -hmm. at whatever the advantages of yoga are. But there's all this other stuff that we should be great at that probably isn't going to be covered, you know. And it doesn't matter what we pick. If I pick going to the gym and lifting weights – if I just lift weights, I'm not going to be cardiovascularly strong. I'm just going to be strong at lifting weights. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> My lung, lung, lungs and heart are going to be stronger than not doing anything at all, but they're not going to be as strong and capable as they should be. So, yeah, whatever you pick. If I'm a runner, I decide not to be doing any resistance training. I'd be great at running, but, yeah, you know, I have weaker bones, less muscle mass, because I'm not actually <laughs> focusing on strength, so there's always a there's always a cost mm. involved is, as well as a long distance runners do. don't look particularly healthy, do they? They're, they're not they they particularly good at running really really far, but they're not health like this sort of vision of health, are they? And and I suppose that's an yeah. example of it. I mean, I suppose it depends. I mean, for some people they are. You know, for some people they they like that aesthetic. You know, to be to be that lean and. You know, so I, I suppose it depends on what you what you define a really healthy aesthetic is. No, but, not just aesthetically. I mean, just generally, they're not but always. In general, that, I, I, yeah. I kind of agree that you you it's a significant cost to the human yeah. body to be able to to run long distances, to be able to be an endurance athlete, uh, and um, you know your your body starts to cannibalize its own muscle tissue to to be, to fuel your ability to do that. So, you know, you run out of glycogen, which is, you know, what your, your body stores to give you kind of medium term storage of, of accessible fuel. You run out of that. If you're not just constantly consuming kind of gels and the like, to <laughs> oh my God. Going, again, people tend, can't tend to because they don't want to disrupt their digestion. Then the body cannibalizes muscle tissue, which is why people tend to be, you know, marathon runners tend to be very, very, very lean, very little muscle mass, very little fat mass as well. Um, there's a price to pay, and some of those, some of the price to pay may be increased risk of fracture, maybe increased risk of upper respiratory tract infection, um, you know, chronic being chronically stressed, becoming addicted to exercise, becoming orthorexic. These are all these are all the risks of 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 you know that kind of pursuit. And if you look at any of the any endurance athlete at the professional level, like you know Paula Radcliffe being a prime example, mm. um, she had 
chronic stress fractures, like hip, spine fractures, constantly. I mean, you know, taking pain relief and pain medication mm. constantly just to be able to run. So, you know, there is a point where exercise is not, it becomes uh, unhealthy and it doesn't matter. It's not just about endurance um, athletes, pretty much most athletes actually arguably are really, there's a fine line between maintaining good health and just focusing on performance and fitness, which means you're no longer healthy. You know, you sacrifice health for performance. Um, so yeah, I'm only interested in really in optimizing my health and recognizing that, pushing your body to become stronger. You have a short-term physical stress that you have to deal with in order for your body to have some sort of overload and adaptation to that. But you have to have adequate rest and adequate recovery. Um, you've got to be fueling yourself adequately. You've got to making sure you're getting good, good sleep patterns so that your body uh, maintains this kind of homeostasis of health. Uh, and if you don't, if there's any imbalance there, you know, you'll start off getting colds on a regular basis more frequently mm. than you should do. You know, your immune system will be a bit suppressed and like you'll feel low and constantly under the weather. Worst cases, you get injured, you know, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, or, or really, really sick as a consequence of, uh, of that pursuit of, of fitness. So, yeah, there's lots of things that we, you know, we're just no longer in tune with our bodies. And so we believe that just doing more is better. You know, if exercise is good for us, then doing more is better. If exercise is good, if I go longer, further, faster, that surely is better for us, right? And well, the answer is no. There's a point, mm. there's a tipping point. There's a bell curve of being sedentary to being very, very active. And you want to get that, you want to hit the sweet spot yeah. where you're optimizing health and well-being. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And and Daryl, so, yeah. so like the... Since we since we actually chatted, it's obviously been six months, and there's there's been a lot going on in your world, and and lots of the stuff you've just spoken about. Now, you've been teaching people a lot about movement. Uh, you you've had your own uh, primal play certification course. Uh, the first few sort of um, people and groups that have been doing that. You've also mm -hmm. written your latest book, uh, Animal Moves, which is you know really what you want to talk about soon. Uh, but but just for like the the guys that maybe haven't heard about yourself and haven't uh, listened to the first podcast that we that we had with you, do you just want to give us like a kind of brief run through your through your kind of history in terms of you know your your health and and lifestyle and kind of you know how, how you got to where you are now? Yeah, so so I I worked um, my career was working most of my career was working within investment banking as a technologist as a as a programmer. Uh, initially then kind of managing large large computer systems and i was i was having annual health checks and one year i was told that i wasn't very well you know um so i was pre-diabetic suffering from hypertension high blood pressure um i was had high risk of cardiovascular disease you know i was constantly stressed out wasn't sleeping very much because i was doing kind of 24-hour support on call so it just wasn't you know great conditions um, I was very, very sedentary because I sat at a desk pretty much at home or at, at work. Um, and I was fortunate enough to, to find out that a healthy life, a healthier lifestyle could prevent some of the issues that I was facing. So I was like, these are all lifestyle diseases or lifestyle symptoms. Um, even though I was told that it's probably genetic, it's, you're getting older, this is what happens. I was like, let me see if there's something else I can do before that. I don't want to take statins. I don't want to take blood pressure lowering medication. I don't want to take, you know, um, pre-diabetes, you know, diabetes medication, like metformin and like, because of the side effects, because of the long-term usage of those medic meds. So let me try life lifestyle. So exercise was the first uh, intervention. I was like, let me become more physically active and see what happens. Um, I did that. I had some really good results. My blood test results were improving. I then decided to improve my diet. So I, I encountered something called paleo, the paleo diet, and things improved even you know, further. Uh, and after a few years working within, still working within banking, I recognized that my, my passions were shifting towards 
what I could do to improve my health and to improve the health of those closest to me, and then to think about those who I could influence based on what I was able to, I achieved for myself. So that's really a, a summation, a condensed, uh, you know, version of what happened to me yeah. over several years. I've improved my health, and many, many years later, I now I'm the founder of Primal Play, which is teaching people how to be really engaged with movement again, how we can recognize what our body's capable of and achieving that using fun as a mechanism of getting there, um, of exploring uh, and enjoying movement again as most of us did as children. So that kind of creativity, that exploration, that constant challenge that we would seek in exploring the world around us and exploring our capability and the capability of those around us, I believe is really important. And, and many of us have become so serious as adults that we forget what it's like to, to be childlike um, or we create adult constructs around that. So play becomes, let's go out and get drunk. Play mm. becomes, you know, let's play poker. You know, let's, you know, it's, you know, let's go to a nightclub. That's playing, for yeah. example. And it, and it isn't necessarily is play. It's, it's almost like a, a, a falsehood. We're trying to create something that we seek and, and it's difficult to get, to get hold of. So we, we try to, make, to take shortcuts to get there. Whereas we have that playful spirit in all of us. You know, that's very easy to access as long as we remember what it was like to be a kid again. You know, <laughs> totally. truly what it, remember what it, what it is to be to, you know, like to be like that way. So, so the primal aspect of primal play is considering that we were designed to move in a particular way. We were designed to um, focus on a particular set of behaviors that were formed during our, our development, during our evolution, during our creation, whatever our belief system is. We were designed to be a particular way. We are a species that relies on uh, certain behaviors which are helpful and there are certain behaviors which are positively harmful to us as human beings. Um, and that includes movement and that includes uh, a wide variety of natural movement patterns that are should be part of our movement physical activity diet, so to speak. Mm. Um, and when you talk about it, it's so daunting when people recognize how little they're doing um, play just allows it to be a little bit more digestible, you know what I mean? So, so, yeah. so <laughs> it, it, it seems a little bit less intimidating because for many exercise is punishing. Yeah. It seems like a chore, you know, mm. oh, I've got to get this out of the way because I want to be stronger. Oh my gosh, I've got to do a heavy, <laughs> never hard session, you know? So that's the mindset for many. Yeah. Whereas if you're playing and you're still achieving those, those goals of getting stronger, getting fitter, getting faster, for me, that's a win-win. So that's how Primal Play came about, is trying to combine uh, both the, the need and desire for us to be physically active with purpose and using play as the vehicle to get us there. Yeah, it's really, really, really powerful because, like you say, when we were young, it was all about exploring. And we just we don't explore ourselves and our, especially not movement. We have such rigid day-to-day -day lives that it's it's never exploring that. And I guess you can explore it in different ways. But yes. um, what you were mentioning now is, is, is really, really like a fun way of doing it. But also it's really practical. What a lot of people don't realize is that that movement is more than just getting your heart racing. And obviously that's, you know, what you're uh, alluding to with what you're doing is that there's a lot of benefits to to movement and exercise. So what are, what are, I know it sounds like a sort of a maybe an obvious thing to ask, but why is movement so good for for us, and why is mm -hmm. it important to do? And beyond just sort of getting your heart racing. Well, I mean, it, it underpins. It really underpins our physiology. So every single part of our being is affected uh, by by movement. So everything from, you know, the obvious, which is, you know, okay, my muscles are working, my bones are getting stronger, my heart rate is elevated, I'm breathing more vigorously. The, the, those are the obvious benefits that people, pretty much everyone knows those are the benefits. But you also get the cognitive benefits. You also get the mood enhancing benefits. So there's the endorphin rush after a run. Uh, there's, you know, the dopamine uh, 
response in terms of the reward you know so you you run your one one k you feel great about achieving that distance so you get a dopamine response serotonin which is uh, the happiness kind of hormone you know you feel great especially early in the morning when you exercise it kind of wakens you up for the day that's part of the serotonin uh, serotonin response if you're interacting with other people so if you're playing you know you're piggyback carrying someone or you're playing tag you have an oxytocin release the kind of hug hormone it's not the love hormone so there's all these hormones that are chemical messengers that are sent around the body that affect our mood our behavior our ability to feel pleased about something uh, and movement enables all of those so not only is it is there a physical benefit in doing so and physical improvements to our health but there are mental benefits as well the mind benefits as well so once we realize that we are literally movement literally bathes the entire body mm. with uh with kind of feel good signals with healing signals um mm. and part of that healing is about the fact we're often broken in some respects after vigorous activity you know we everything from might be micro tears of the muscle fiber you know slight damage to the bones because bones are constantly breaking and rebuilding all of the time so by exercising you're teaching your body to build stronger bones your muscles and fibers are breaking because and tearing because actually they want to grow stronger next time and so that uh, in initial acute stress to the body physical stress to the body allows adaptation which means you get stronger which means your heart gets stronger your lungs are more able to take in more oxygen so you become much more efficient and able and capable so that's a cycle of exercise of movement of physical activity to the body whereby you have this you do something you feel a little bit weaker <laughs> as a response as you're recovering from that uh, then you heal from that and you get stronger and that's a cycle that we should be should be following as we add more and more movement to our our day-to-day -day lives um, and that's why we feel much better for doing so and that's how the body adapts to movement and feel stronger and healthier as a result so there's an overwhelming amount of research on movement being medicine why movement actually is probably the number one intervention for for good health you know 50 percent wow. reduction in all causes of disease so mm. all cause all cause mortality uh, is what's looked at as referenced uh, as um, with a 50 percent reduction if somebody's physically active in comparison to somebody who's sedentary mm. of all causes of death doesn't matter what it doesn't matter what you use as a cause of death you're half as likely to die if you're regularly physically active wow. so you know, if there's anything to take away from this uh, podcast discussion, <laughs> wow. it's, it's being moving. aware of how powerful <laughs> movement is um, as an antidote to lifestyle disease. So, so Daryl, can I yeah. just try and like link a couple of things here? So uh, we just spoke to um, a lady this week, uh, Rosie Millen, who, who suffered from uh, adrenal fatigue, right? Mm. And... Um, that was basically because she had just, you know, she had too much basically going on and, and as was basically, you know, just too stressed out at the end of it. Um, yes. And, and she was literally bedridden for three years, which is, which is, hmm. I mean, it's really crazy. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, one of the things that she had to stop doing, though, was exercising, right? Yes. Although, although she kind of was, I think she started doing yoga and, and a bit more meditation. So, like... Mm. What are your thoughts on that? Like, I mean, I know it's still a form of exercise, the yoga, but like, yeah. is that maybe a, the right thing to do or wrong thing to do to completely pull back when in that circumstance? I, I would say that um, it's the wrong thing to do to completely pull back. Yeah. So, so if you're, you know, if you're chronically stressed, then you decide to do something which, which, uh, continues to elevate that stress so for example if i'm i work in a, a stressful job then i decide to do ultra endurance events so i'm keeping myself chronically stressed again mm. uh, then i decide you know i don't have time to rest and recuperate because i just need to do more stuff you know i've got stuff to do uh mm. in that in that situation of course exercise is not that helpful 
you know, the person's not sleeping very much, that's not helpful. They're, they're chronically stressed because of their job and their home life and toxic relationship or whatever. So, of course, that's a recipe for disaster, right? If I then get adrenal, uh, adrenal fatigue or chronic fatigue syndrome and I literally can't get out of bed and there's nothing that I can do, um, you could argue that you just need now need to have so much downtime um, that, doing anything at all is going to be too much. You know, you're like, the likelihood is you're just going to go back into this kind of cycle of crashing. Um, but I think it's not a case of, um, you know, one of the ways that the body produces energy is through exercise. Yeah. Okay. It's through the, and the mitochondria, which is the powerhouse, the energy uh, source of the cell. Uh, physical activity increases the amount of mitochondria and it increases the volume and the efficiency of mitochondria. So I would argue that just doing a little bit of something very intense, and that might be 10 mm. seconds, would be better than somebody doing half an hour of yoga. Yeah. That's, that's my opinion. Because you're, you, know, you want your body to know that it is okay. It is okay to engage in very vigorous activity, but you just can't do very much of it whilst you're in a very broken state. So it might be a few seconds. That might be it. A few seconds... Um, and I have had clients who, with chronic fatigue, and that's usually what I prescribe to them as part of their yeah. part of their kind of rehabilitation. And they're, and they're always very reticent. Like, no, are you sure about that? There's you know, no way. Yeah. You know, there's no way I can do that. And then they may do a second or two and go, that's enough for the day. But you want to prime your body again for movement. And I wouldn't I wouldn't apply that as a generic prescription for everyone, but. Uh, Again, if you realize that movement is medicine, if you recognize that the body responds really well to those healing signals, and part of that requires you to have that a little bit of a dip in order to get better. So all the inflammatory markers would be increased in the short term. That's what happens. It's not a good place to be. You know, it creates a bit of a, uh, almost like a sandstorm environment within the body, but it's doing that because it wants to send in those healing signals, it wants to send those uh, anti-inflammatory markers to those parts of the body that need that need a help and need assistance. Uh, so that's when it's a it's a benefit. Yeah. So yeah, it's obviously it's individual. You got to look at the individual and decide what's best for them. But I feel that sometimes, um, you know, sometimes we believe that only one particular type of movement approach is always going to be the best. So if somebody's mm. really stressed out, you will often say that the recommendation for that person has to be something which is very meditative, very low intensity. You know, your eyes have got to be closed. You've got to be listening to Enya and chill out music. <laughs> and, then it's, and then it's all good. But any exercise is stress reducing. Any exercise is. As long as you don't do too much of it. As long mm. as it isn't too intense for too long. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, totally. So, yeah. so yeah, so that's what, you know, exercise modulates the immune system it reduces chronic stress that's what exercise will do as long as you're not staying in the chronically stressed state all the time yeah okay. so so um people just aren't aware uh, of the you know how ma mindful it is you know yeah. if, I, if i'm when i was sprinting for that bus for example that's probably the most mindful state i could be in yeah. do you know what i mean yeah, yeah. there's all those, those all those distractions it's a busy street. I'm bobbing and weaving in, in mm. between people. I'm going maximal effort. I'm more mindful in that moment. I'm in the moment completely. Nothing else matters apart from me going flat out and getting that bus. Yeah. That's it. That's mindful. Yeah. Equally as mindful is me being in a darkened room, you know, doing some man, you know, saying some mantras and again, you know, playing, listening to Enya. Look <laughs> <laughs> some gladoscope. You know, I mean, and everything being blissful. Yeah, I didn't want to plug my own music, but you know, <laughs> but yeah, you, you know, do you know what I'm saying? So there's, so, you know, a child playing, you know, imaginatively playing. They're also mindful. Yeah. They so are. this is part of this like reductionist approach again, not being holistic, that we mm. believe there's only one way to achieve a particular goal. So I'm not knocking yoga. I'm not knocking meditation, but you know, I can be meditative walking. I can be meditative running. I can be meditative going 100% flat out. I could be doing 10 burpees. Not that I would I like doing 10 burpees, but <laughs> if you get into a cycle of, just do, of doing burpees, you can be right there, blissed out, like, oh my goodness, you know, this is, you. I'm in a euphoric state of, 
of doing whatever I'm doing, completely in the moment, focusing on my breathing, focusing on my environment, yeah. in tune with myself. So once people realize that power that extends throughout the spectrum of intensity, we'll all be in a much better place. We'll all much be much better at, at applying the uh, correct prescription of, for movement at the time we need it. Daryl. You know, so, so yeah. He has a loaded question what I like for you. Oh, sorry, mm. Craig. Yeah. Just it's, before we move on from that, yeah. what I like about that, that, that aspect as well, what you were saying is, you know, when you're in that moment, when you're sprinting for the bus, you're in that total state of being mindful or, or present. But you can also work it the other way. And I know you've talked about this before is when you say you, you can switch it around and go, I'm going to be mindful now about the way I walk. And that's also a slightly different way of looking at it. And so when you said, oh, we can just go for a walk, that's what I think a lot of people don't always get is that just in and of itself, walking is not always going to be that beneficial, but you can walk with an intent in a different yes. way versus w just having a stroll and suddenly yes. you've changed the game. And I think you, you always like show these cool little ways of doing that. I, I love that aspect. Yeah, that's a really good, that's a really good point, Craig. And I, I suppose it's, it's, um, you know, you want to get to the stage where it just happens naturally. Mm. Do you know what I mean? You want to get to the stage where you're going for a walk. And the, the first time I kind of learned how to be a bit more mindful is, you know, going for a walk and noticing, you know, I, you know, you take the same pathway to get to, say, you know, commuting to work every single day. And the day that you actually realize, today I'm going to notice things I haven't noticed before. That's when you start becoming more mindful. Yeah. Like, oh, look at the leaves on that tree. I've never, I've walked past this tree a million times. And now I can actually appreciate it for what it is. You know what I mean? Like, oh my yeah. goodness, how beautiful is that? <laughs> you know, uh, you know, I've never noticed that, that that street before because who couldn't care less. Today I'm actually going to pay attention. I'm going to recognize that street name. You know, uh, you know, you know what I mean? What, yeah. it, it, it doesn't take much to just become more aware uh, uh, and more present. Mm. And so, so there doesn't need much in the way of intent to go. You know what? I'm just going to pay a bit more attention today. I'm going to pay a bit more attention to how my, you know, my feet connecting with the ground, what I'm listening to. I'm going to take my headphones off and actually just listen to an environment. And, oh, my gosh, I can hear the birds for the first time. I mean, I know they're always there, but today they sound a little bit more, you know, it's resonating with me far more, you know, even though they've always been there. So we could all learn a lesson, a lesson from that. And kids, yeah. again, have it. They don't need to be taught how to be mindful. They just need to be, and it just mm. happens. They can, they can be 100% focused on almost nothing. Do you know what I mean? They can have a piece yeah. of paper, a cardboard box, and be just in, enthralled by that as the latest gadget or, or whatever they, <laughs> you know, Disney film. They don't necessarily need that. We just yeah. seem to feed, feed that as parents maybe. But, but kids can amuse themselves with pretty much nothing, just their imagination, very little in terms of ways in terms of props and equipment. Um, and we need to be able to do that ourselves as adults. Like, mm. why do I need the ladies in, in gym equipment? Why do I need the best training shoes to be able to go out and do whatever? What, you know, why? Why do I need to wear a particular outfit and compression gear? I mean, what, <laughs> what, why? <laughs> you know what I mean, we don't need that. It's nice to have. Don't get me wrong. We all like our toys, but but we need to be able to survive without them as well. And when you yeah. do, then you're going to enjoy your toys even more. Do you know what I mean? It's not like you're not going to lose. You're not losing yeah. out. You're going to benefit even more by by feeling comfortable with with both environments. You know, I want to I want to be in a nice five star hotel and and have five star meals, blah blah blah. But I want to be able to be able to you know be on a in a shack on a beach somewhere, no mod cons, and feel equally as, as happy about that. You know what I mean? Maybe not so happy about the mosquitoes, but. <laughs> You can get mosquitoes in a five-star hotel, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Um. I, I kind of, I kind of wonder, like, just listening to what you're saying there, and and sort of also tying it into the people who seem to gravitate towards what you're doing. So, like, you know, you do a lot of work with younger kids. Uh, you mm. do a lot of work with older adults. You know, and then like I'm talking, you know, say sixty plus. Uh, yeah. I almost wonder if it's like this generational thing or this age range thing whereby we, we, we kind of like, we feel we need all these other things to kind of make our life interesting. You know what I mean? And, and we kind of get distracted by those. Um, because if you think about it, like, like you said, young kids, 
they're quite happy just to play with their little toy and 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 they they're mm. very present and mindful of that moment older people as well mm. they they very happy just sitting there kind of i don't know maybe say reading their book or knitting or um mm. playing cards or something like that and and yes. it's us guys in this kind of middle range that that maybe seem to just make it more uh yeah. confusing or um yes. difficult for ourselves that's a really good point. I mean, it was a topic discussed. I was at, at a play conference, uh, a conference on, on the value of play recently. And this was actually discussed. Like, you know, they had a graph and, and basically saying that childhood, ch- early childhood, lots of playtime, then you, then you work and kind of play drops. And it's all about work, 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 work. Then people retire. And those that kind of go, well, now I can, now I can focus on what I really enjoy. Yeah. Now I can focus on the stuff that I couldn't do for the last 30, 40 years because I was raising kids. I was blah, 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 doing all this sort of stuff. And so we can play again. And I, and I think you're, I think you're right. This, this, the now, the us now generation, the ones who are working, the ones who, who've got all these goals, like I've got to get this, I've got to get that. I've got to achieve this. I've got to achieve that. Play is basically be, has become superfluous and pushed to one side. The also what's happening is we our children are being given that kind of work ethic as well. So don't play, you know, work harder. You've got to get your, you know, you've got to get your, your right exam results. You've got to be the best in class. You've got to, you know, you've got to be, you know, you're going to be a future Nobel Peace Prize winner, you know, whatever. That's what we want for you. Um, and so I, I'm sure that for these, this generation coming up, they probably won't retire gracefully. You know, we now, you know, we now know people are working longer than ever before. You know, so that's already happening. People retired at 60, 65 when I was younger. Now people are forced to work longer because the retirement, pack, you know, isn't enough to sustain them. So they have to, you know, feel compelled to work for longer and longer and longer. So that leisure time that we expect later in life where we can kind of relax and do this, you know, travel around the world and do the stuff that we really enjoy, it's, it's probably less likely to happen. So there's got to be something about this that we can attain now. You know, not that we put off because we don't know if tomorrow is going to be here. Yeah. You know what I mean, it's, it's not guaranteed to anyone, right? So there's got to be something about our life which is fulfilling now, which isn't about um, the pro, you know the end of the process. You know, what I mean, it's got to be about the process itself. It's got to be mm. about the now. Um, and I'm trying not to be, you know, airy fairy about it, <laughs> like <laughs> you know, not at uh, all. But, but there's got to be something about about what we do, which is fulfilling now, which isn't just being fulfilled because I'm getting a paycheck at the end of the month or because I'm able to buy my nice little present for my partner or for myself, you know, and treat myself every now and again. I want to be treated instant, you know, instant gratification, I think, is really important Yeah. Um, mm. in the sense of, of us feeling good about ourselves and the world around us. That's what I mean by mm. by instant gratification. You know, um, and there are some things that we have to work towards, of course, but there should be some things that we can just enjoy for the sake of enjoyment. Because once those things disappear, um, uh, you know, you can't get them back. Yeah, do you know yeah. what I mean? There's nothing, there is nothing you can do. Uh, and we don't want to spend our lives with regret. We all know what happens when you look at those lists of those regret lists at the end of life. And, yeah. and, and they'll always say things like, oh, I wish I, I, you know, they never say things like, I wish I spent more time working in the office and, to, <laughs> and doing overtime. And, and you know what I mean? I wish I spent, <laughs> I spent less time with the kids when they were young. And, yeah. you know, they don't, they don't say that sort of stuff. They say they wish they had. They wish they hadn't have focused so much on this. They wish they had have left work early and spent more time with their kids. They wish they hadn't let somebody else, to, you know, look after them. And they wish they had spent more time building really good relationships with their friends and family and, you know, the things that really genuinely matter. So, um, and of course, it's always a constant struggle and battle and no one's perfect. But I'm constantly thinking about that. Like, how can I, yeah. how can I get more out of now? Um, and there's a great film I saw recently, which I've, I see as often as I can, called The Perfect Sense. Okay. I mean, I compel, if you haven't seen it, I compel you and anyone listening, out of everything that we discussed today, please watch this movie, The Perfect Sense, with Ewan McGregor and Eva Green. And um, you, you recognize, imp- when you see that film, you'll recognize how important the now is. You know, you'll yeah. recognize how important you have to value uh, what you could very easily lose 
you know what you can easily take for granted mm. so um yeah one of one of the best films i've ever seen to, to be honest thanks for uh, that yeah i expect, I expect some you know expect to even if you're not the sort of person who cries in a film because of course real <laughs> men don't cry do they we don't cry crocodile uh, tears what are you talking about man <laughs> <laughs> i don't cry but yeah it's the kind of film that trust me you know what i mean there are plenty of tears when i when i saw this film so oh, cool and, and you know yeah. you know what just to just to to kind of reiterate what you're saying there like I think people go through life thinking they're going to live forever. And that's kind yes. of why like we we are how we are, you know. We don't actually go oh, hang on, this is this is actually going to end. Do you know what I mean? Like and if we thought like that, even though it's like a horrible say way of thinking about it, then we would be flipping more present, you know, and we would be doing the stuff we we should be doing and want to be doing. And once we're doing, yeah, for sure, for sure. And of course, no one, you know, we we don't want to think about death. We, we you know, even though it's you, you know, apart from taxes, <laughs> death is one of the things that are certain to us. You know, grief is 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 a certainty. Pain of some description is a certainty in life, and we we are we are averse to all of that. We are, we try to avoid them, uh, and it's only when we can embrace them that we recognise that that help you know it helps us to be aware of that you know when you lose somebody precious to you and close to you for the first time you know you kind of feel as if you're the only person who's going through this but it's it is part of it is part of life you know it's gonna you are gonna be one day you're gonna have people you're close to who are gonna be grieving over you you know you not no longer being there so i don't know how best to prepare for that but we need to be we need to prepare for that and we need to spend you know, be focused on what we can do to really enjoy um, the, the present moment. There was one guy I wanted to mention um, uh, as a guy called Bernie de Coven, who he was basically a, he graduated, he did his PhD on the importance of play of all things. I mean, you know, what a thing to do your PhD on, right? right. Wow. So he, he wrote computer games. I mean, so this, this guy, I think he probably graduated in his six in the sixties. And he wrote like he was one of the first to write computer games, but you know, back in the seventies. Um, and he really tried to infuse everything that he did was all about play. Did kind of improvisational stuff. He was very funny. And I and I met him a year ago. I was at a, a conference on the, called the Study of Play, right? The, the Association for the Study of Play. I mean, until I got a conference, into conference, doesn't I sound no right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I had no idea there were conferences like this, right? So it's all heavy knee deep in, in research around play. Uh, sometimes isn't that exciting, but, but anyway, that's what some people do. So I met this guy and, uh, I remember I was doing, I did some primal play sessions there and this guy came to me and he had a, he had a walking stick. Um, and he said to me, he says, Oh, you know, you remind me of me when I was, when I was young. Right. And I didn't know who this guy was at this point. Yeah. And I was like, I was like, oh, what? I was like, what do you mean? He went, oh, he said, there's something about you. He says, do, he says, don't lose your spirit. He says, whatever you have, he says, don't lose it, right? Uh -huh. So that's the first thing he said to me. And then every time we saw each other again, you know, he had a big beaming smile. Um, you know, uh, he was like really weak. It was a struggle for him to walk, a few, even for a few meters. And I was like, I wonder what's, you know, what's up with this guy. So we kept in touch. He's like, we have to talk. He says, when you go back to London, he went, we have to get on Skype. I said, we have to, com we have to communicate. And I was like, this guy really wants to, you know, really wants to keep in touch with me. So anyway, he, I then found out about this guy. You know, I, I uh, found out he'd written books about play, about being on a playful path, really influential in that field, in improvisational theater, like big, he's a, he's a big big ticket item in that world and he told me he he the reason he was sick was because he had stage four lung cancer and he he it was terminal he knew he was going to die he says you know maybe weeks to live maybe months I, I have no idea at that stage my sister had passed from, from lung cancer uh, about mm. a year before about a year before so I shared that with him and and um and he just said to me he says Daryl he said the one thing I want to tell you in all the conversation that we had, we spoke about other things, but he said, one thing I'm going to say to you is like, do not lose your passion. He went, the amount of time I've wasted trying to get people to, you know, agree with my opinion, to, you know, to work harder in particular fields, this, that, and the other. He went, the one thing that I'm so happy about uh, and that I will, n I will not regret is 
staying true to myself and staying true to the passions that I have and leaving behind a legacy. And he went, wow. between now and the day I die, he went, that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to leave a legacy for me and my family and for, for those who will think of me and care for me. And so last week when I was at another conference and they mentioned, they mentioned this guy, he passed away two weeks ago. Oh, shame. Wow. Um, he created in his local park, right? And this, this epitomizes the guy. He created this a swing, right, in this in his local park, so that people could remember him. But this swing was a two-person swing, so you're basically sitting opposite each other. But one swing was for like a child, one was for an adult, mm -hmm. yeah. and so you literally the the adult and child are constantly looking into into each other's eyes when they're swinging, and they had some video footage of of like families using wow. it. And the bond you can see between the child and the, and the parent using it. But anyway, that, that picture, and it's, I mean, I hope you can just visualize yeah, this. Can, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that image was just all about him. So I was just like, wow. how incredible, simple concept, but something that I probably would never th could never think of. But that was just him. You know what I mean? Yeah. How can I make a legacy of something that's really playful and engaging? And, um, and yeah, he, he, you know, the one thing he said to me was, I remember saying to him something like along the lines of, he's like, oh, tell me what Primer plays about. And I told him and he said, what are your greatest difficulties? And I was like, oh, you know, sometimes people just think it's a bit, it's a bit of a joke. You know what I mean? Um, you can't get fit that way. You know, it's just a, it's just a waste of time. And he said to me, he went, don't try and convince those who are in, you know, interested in listening. He went, there's so many people who need your wow. message or who need to play. He went, those are the ones you need to find. That's who you need to focus on, and I swear to you, that's the best thing that that I've ever, that I've ever been told in terms of what I do now was that one sentence. Forget about those who are not interested in listening. Like, don't waste your energy. They're always those people are always going to be there. Do you know what I mean? Telling you yeah. not to do it, telling you it's a waste of time, making you feel bad about yourselves. I mean, gravitate towards people who will really appreciate your message, who are seeking out that message, uh, and uh, yeah, so. <laughs> Well, what a uh, what a real moving story. I mean, like, let me just say that you're doing his legacy justice because, you know, it, it sounds like the guy you just want to you'd love to meet and and have a uh, conversation with, you know. Yeah, um, I, I really wish I I'd, I'd recorded a, a, an interview with him. You know, I, I, that's one regret. I was like, I had the opportunity whilst he was alive, um, and I, I put it off. Like, oh, I'm, I'll do my podcast, you know, a podcast in future, and he'll be a guest that I would love to have. And yeah, he passed two weeks ago, but um, but the great thing is, you know, not having any regrets about this is that I had that opportunity to have that lesson of oh. don't, you know, yeah. don't lose that zeal, don't lose that fire, don't lose that passion, don't waste it on those who aren't interested. Don't try to convince people of what they're not willing to listen to. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm like, I was like, oh my gosh, how how profound is that and he said that he said to me that's his regret that's the one regret he had wow. his, of trying to basically twist everyone's arm to become more playful you know what i mean yeah <laughs> that was that's what he wanted for everyone he says i want what everyone to, i want everyone to feel like i do about life you know and he said he realizes yeah some people you just can't convince of course but but yeah. but you, but Daryl, you you seem like you have so many people that that like are convinced already i mean like I, I obviously know you from from way back uh, when we used to work together, and like I, I've seen the sort of progression of of you and your you know from Fitness Explorer to Primal Play and and everything like that. And you always have great groups of people. You know what I mean? You're always having fun. You are always laughing. Like it's so <laughs> it's so nice to see. You know what I mean? And, and everyone else is too. So. I don't know that do you feel like you're struggling to convince people or do you feel like that's what you were trying to do you know um I suppose I mean I suppose it's it's taking a while to convince people that this is something you know worthwhile pursuing so especially because most of this is about the fitness you know I'm trying to get people to be more physically active mm. uh, and and so most of that space is about no pain no gain right it is about punish yourselves to become a better person you know, um, so Boot I'm a bit camp and all these kinds of things. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. You know, so I'm yeah. a bit anti-establishment. I'm a bit, it's a bit disruptive yeah. position to be in. And so there's probably more opposition. 
so it'd be more comfortable me going into, you know, if I went into nursery school education and said, hey, let's play more. Of course, everyone's going to be like, yeah, sure. That sounds like a great idea. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, of course. Um, but when, you know, if you go into a gym and said that, people would be like, no, I'm not here to play. I'm here to work really hard. Like, look, mm. look at this environment. So I'm trying to go into that world and say, guys, you know, you need to be playing out more because you'd actually achieve more than whatever your workouts are doing. You, know, you could be stronger. You know, you could be like more capable physically. You could actually be healthier if you adopt this route. So that's what the, that's what I suppose the challenge is. Those who get it, get it. Those who've, who've attended my workshops and go or play shops and go, oh my goodness, this guy is really strong or this stuff can make me <laughs> much better physically in, totally. in, in ways that I couldn't, you know, I couldn't imagine. Um, but it's getting people through the door in the first place. So once people get it, once people experience it, then I think most people, you know, get it. But um, it's for those who are spectating going, oh, that guy's just pulling people around or they're climbing trees. Ha, 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 ha. What? <laughs> That's not getting anyone fit. That's just messing around, you yeah. know. Uh, so, but but I'm less, after that conversation with him and probably being on this, on this pathway for a little bit longer, I'm less concerned about those people now. Yeah. Do you know mm. what I mean? I, I, I used to... You know, I used to be really concerned about, oh, my gosh, that person's got 50-pack abs. You know, <laughs> maybe that's, that's the kind of guy I need to be, you know, that's who I need to be, and that's the kind of person that I want to be attracting. And I'm like, actually, no, I don't need to attract those guys. They're so, they are well-serviced for. They're well-catered for yeah. uh, in the fitness, fitness industry. I need to cater for those who want a, an excuse to get off the couch and, and for that excuse to be, I want to have some fun with movement. Totally. So, yeah, so it's, it's, it was a – it was a journey that I had to go along and I needed somebody like him to say, come on, Daryl, if you really, if play is really what you're about, which I believe it is, then that, that's what you should be focusing on. Um, beautiful, beautiful man. Mm. Um, and, and I'm glad that I can, that I still feel this way and that's what continues to drive me on. And, um, and I'm happy that people are the people who are with me, who support what I do. I'm more than grateful um, and eternally grateful for that. Of course. Well, uh, let me just say that, you know, in terms of your own legacy, I think it's amazing what you're doing because the 50 pack abs and that's great, but you're talking about creating bonds. You're talking about health. You're talking about longevity. You're talking about happiness, uh, community. That is the way things are moving. I feel like there's a big groundswell of this kind of uh, thinking uh, within the general public and you, mm. you you're at that front edge of it and you're definitely going to just draw people as you shine your light even brighter you'll just draw more people to you and and people will start to realize that the, that movement is just that it's about all of those things not just one separate aspect like exercising to get a big bicep that's that's not a sustainable long term uh, cool, exciting way to be healthy necessarily. For some people it is, but I think yeah. actually it, the, the, that's the minority actually. So, you know, just mm. coming back to, to primal play, um, you know, you've got quite a few interesting tenets and uh, principles of of what it's all about. So maybe you could just mm. walk through um, the three principles. Yeah, so I suppose, um, you know, one overarching is that the movements have to be primal. So basically universal, instinctive, pretty much things that anyone could do. Regardless of your ability or skill level, you can all take part in. Regardless of your age, your ability, your lack of mobility, your you know, some physical impediment you have, you should still be able to take part in in the in in the practice. Um it should also be practical. So it should be able to help you do the stuff you need to do day to day whatever that is it should improve your function it should improve your capability and the third overarching is that it should be playful you know so there should be something which is enjoyable there should be something that is therapeutic in terms of engaging engaging with it uh so you know that's that's probably the simplest way of encapsulating what primal play, primal play is is that it's primal it's practical and that it's playful so um yeah 
Is that a? I'm trying to think. Is what? That's an alliteration, right? Yeah, that's an alliteration. Yeah, yeah. yeah it <laughs> is. It works well. Uh, <laughs> yeah, primal, practical, and playful. That's your overarching. And then a little bit more detail is, you know, it should be functional. Uh, we should be re-engaging with our inner child. So I think for most of us, we're almost embarrassed uh, about being childlike because it's something that we pushed to one side when we were young. Now we're mm. mature. Now we're adults. But um, I think about the big cats as one one prime example. Big cats are still playful. You know, I mean, they're still serious. They're still going to get yeah. through. Still, you know, but but there's a time where they will play, and they don't play differently to, you know, the younger, the young, young cubs. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? And, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. You know, they play in exactly the same way, and um, we as humans decide that play for adults has to be different to what we played as a kid, you know, we don't want to, why play tag, even though it's so much fun when we were a kid, yeah. why would you want to play that True. now as an adult? If you play it as an adult though, it is so much fun. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's probably even more fun because it's been such a long time since you played it. You've totally. forgotten how good it is. So like, it's like, oh my gosh, I'm tasting this for the first time, like for the first time. Yeah. So, so that's something I, I recently realized just for myself. I was like, hold on a second. Yeah. Other mammals play. Know when they're yeah. when they're older animal mammals, but but they play, and they play exactly the same way. Maybe not as frequent, maybe not as energetic. You know what I mean? As yeah. they were when they were <laughs> when younger, but they still do it. They still move in the same way. They still have the same sort of delight. Humans are like, nah. You know what I mean? We're gonna yeah, do something yeah. different now. We were adults, and that's part of the problem. So we don't really embrace play in the way that we should as adults, as older adults. Um, or we do other stuff like, you know, we'll go for, you know, oh, I'm going to go hiking. That's my playtime. Or, you know, I'm going to do some pottery, you know, or, or listen to music. I mean, what the heck are you talking about? Yes, of course, they can be playful, but it, it, it's it's so divorced from what we could be doing with some clay. You know what I mean? Like, instead of pottery, <laughs> we could just be like from it against you know what i mean just like yeah whatever i don't care what this looks like it's gonna have some fun instead of hiking i'm gonna kind of go and play up in the hills you know and play tag even walking tag even hide and even seek rec <laughs> even recently have you heard of walking soccer or walking football no. So, oh no it's all serious so basically it's, it's for older adults oh, who right. recognize you know they can't play soccer anymore they can't play football anymore so how can we get still get to play and somebody must have decided we'll play walking football. Oh, cool! So the, one of the rules is you cannot run. <laughs> you have you can only walk, which means that anyone anyone can do it pretty much. And, and wow. so, you know, that in itself is a is a playful uh, and ingenious way to to ensure that you have longevity <laughs> with, with it. You know, using your imagination. Um, and I suppose we need more. We need much more of that. Yeah. You know, we need to stop putting ourselves into box and saying, oh, no, no, that's not the done thing now. You know, you hit 30, you've got to do this. You hit 40, that's, you know, that's got to stop. Stay behind, you know, you've retired now. Oh, whoa, 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 Those behaviors are not something that a gentleman of your age should be engaging in, Mr. Yeah. Edwards, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, 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 totally. Yeah. It's yeah. probably all the more reasons why, why it should. And just to finally, men uh, final point to mention, there was an interesting study on nostalgia uh, for older adults. So the, the research was putting older adults, 60s, 70s and 80s, into a house and basically decorating their rooms uh, to a time where they were a teenager. <laughs> so if you only had a radio when you were a teenager, they'd put a radio in the room, they'd play the songs of your, you know, your 16th birth birthday, um, you know, you'd have pictures of, you know, your crushes on the wall, you know, that sort of stuff. <laughs> You know, you saw the clothing, you wore the clothing you would have worn then. Um, and they did that for all the participants. And within weeks, you had people who were walking in, kind of hunched over with walking sticks, who would, didn't need a walking stick and were kind of yeah, wow. fully up. Wow. Uh, people were more in, living more independently. So there were some who were saying, we can't get up the stairs. And they were told, you're gonna, if you want to get upstairs, you're going to have to get upstairs. You know, if they, if they physically could. You know, they didn't need assistance really, but they just decided that, they, that it was better, it was less comfortable, you know, mm. more comfortable to do so. But those adults were like taking the stairs, <laughs> like, wow. you know, so cool. me, 
You know what I mean? They were all miserable when they came in. At the end, they were laughing and joking and like, I mean, it's incredible. Wow. And the BBC did a documentary based on that research huh. and the similar sort of things happened. That's uh, amazing. People like coming. Yeah, 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 yeah. So just becoming, being nostalgic and thinking about how things were when you were young was enough to get people to be more youthful and vibrant and full of life and, and excited about life, you know, not just thinking about, oh, how miserable totally. it all is because pain and I can't move as well as I used to. Uh, so, yeah, nostalgia and being childlike, not childish. Yeah. So you don't want to be yeah. childish. You don't want to be petulant. You don't. Want to, you know what I mean? But mm. you do you want to be childlike because there's some innocence there where you're excited about the world around you. You're excited about – you know, meeting new people, you're excited about meet, you know, a new environment, you know, exploring it, looking at a leaf as if it's the most interesting thing ever. Uh, yeah. You know what I mean? So that type of excitement and childlike uh, state is what is what I'm talking is what I'm talking about. Sure. Um, and then finally, it's recognizing how beneficial play is for our health. So how beneficial laughter is for our health. So laughter makes us feel better than just the fact that we're laughing. You know, like yeah. it actually, it actually improves our health outside of the moment of laughter itself. So of course our mood improves, um, but you know, we decrease stress, it decreases the likelihood of anxiety. We're less likely to be depressed. There were so many feel good factors that come out of laughter and having fun, genuine fun, intrinsic, intrinsically, um, sourced fun, yeah. um, the fun in the communication, in the communion of others. It's it's all very powerful. We're social creatures. We're like a, a you know we're no we're nomadic, herd like creatures, and a lot of the 21st century, you know, makes us siloed, makes us independent. You know, it's all about what I can do. I've got to be better than my peers. I want to get a bigger mm. bonus than that person. Totally. You know? But in in our time of our past, it was all about how good we were as a unit, how good we were together, because. We've got to get the whole tribe from A to B. No good you getting there and the rest of us, <laughs> you know what I mean? Totally. Yeah, yeah. Miles yeah. behind because if you're on your own, it's you know, you're gonna be eaten, mate. Or you know what I mean? Exactly. So we yeah. together. The oldest with the youngest. Yeah. You know, yeah. the most capable with the least capable. And society could learn a lot from us becoming totally. more more tribe like as a as a, as a planet, you know, considering yeah. each other rather than in separation and isolation sure. yeah absolutely you know like look after the older people more because that's sort of something we put to the side isn't it which is really really sad um yeah you know, just just based on what you're saying there Darryl, i'm gonna have a chat to my girlfriend just now after the call's finished and see if i can put posters of uh the cricket players and rugby players <laughs> I that i used say. to wear when, when i was yeah <laughs> in the bedroom on the wall yeah see, <laughs> see if she doesn't mind that so it'd take down uh, some of the nice art you know what i mean <laughs> so i'm gonna say like i don't know i, I you know I, it's, it's I, did, I can't i can't imagine who it would be but i i feel like sophia loren or <laughs> or i don't know i'm probably talking about more me but uh yeah but yeah that's really it, it's it is remarkable like even like there were times now I've been I've been recently listening to more music yeah. that I would listen to as a teen, and like it's amazing how I felt. You know, you feel younger just by just doing yeah. that. I literally, you know, it's almost an embar. I don't know. I I, I almost re I recognize that there was an embarrassment almost of the fact that I used to love that when I was a particular age because it was like oh that was when you were that was in the eighties. You know, like, yeah. Put that to one side, but I just spent like a week or so just going, you know what? I'm going to pretty much just listen to that over and over again. And just That's like I so listen cool. to certain things over and over again, like a hundred times, rewind the cassette <laughs> back again. You know, I played some of these songs again and again. I'm like, Oh my goodness. How good did I used to feel listening yeah. to this? <laughs> Somebody said to me, never listen to this song again. I probably would have felt like my life wasn't worth living, you know? Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> yeah, there is something about, about nostalgia and, and, you know, mm. watching those kids, you know, movies you used to watch as a kid and, and, and trying to delight, think about how you, how much you appreciated it back then. You know what I mean? Like not being embarrassed about it. Like, I don't know, watching the Lion King saying, going, oh, wow, dude. isn't this the best thing you've ever seen, even if you don't believe that now. <laughs> but, but there's a time where you probably did feel like there's no other movie that could ever top this. It all comes back to us stifling ourselves so much because of what we think other people think about us. 
and it's the same exactly the same thing like when you if you sometimes you would just you know shut yourself down because you were you were worried that your mates would think you are you listening to that really like you're listening to that you know like pop song or whatever it may be and and it's ridiculous like it made me think of something i see a lot at work is a lot of elderly people like i say well do you ever take your shoes off you know just to get some feeling in your feet like you know what i mean like just feel the earth and get grounded and and most of them will say no i don't ever do that I never walk without shoes on because I'd never be seen without my shoes on. Do you know what I mean? I'm like, mm-hmm. what are you thinking? Like, it's yeah. just because of what people are thinking about you. <laughs> yes, exactly. And you and you think in some respects that as you get older, you'd be less concerned about what mm. society um, feels about you know. But actually, you you probably become more conformist as you get older, more conservative as you get older. You know, that's probably a, a, a you know conventional, fairly conventional trait. But I'm certainly becoming less. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I can't say yeah. less conservative, but I'm definitely less concerned about what people think. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm doing. I know we talked about bear crawls and crab walks earlier, like in the gym. But I'm, you know, I'm like doing pull-ups on bus shelves. <laughs> I'm like you know, <laughs> buses in the street. I'm climbing trees. I'm, I'm getting kids and parents <laughs> going. You're influencing my kid to want to climb trees. You need to stop that, sir. Oh, so wow. I, I'm, I, I don't really, you know, when it comes to movement, I don't really. I don't really care anymore. And I remember even once I was, I think I had some music on on my headphones and I was walking down the street and it was a certain time in my life where I wouldn't have been, I wouldn't have thought twice about dancing along the street when I was listening to music. You know, I used to love dancing. And I, and so this day I was like, I don't really care who's watching. I'm just going to dance. I love this song. It's not the sort of song I can listen to without dancing. What's the point having this on? I can't <laughs> dance. I remember dancing. I was just dancing down the street, fell off Fred Astaire. You know, it was <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean, but I was just like, how wonderful and freeing that was. And it maybe only lasted about 20 seconds before I was like, oh, um, you know what? It is a bit uncomfortable, people watching me. <laughs> but for the 20 seconds that it lo- that I was like, I don't care. Oh, my goodness. Like, we need more moments oh, like that. Totally. You know, I'm not offending anyone, hopefully. I'm not. No one's harmed by that behavior. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I- I'm not. I wasn't doing it with my eyes closed. So I wasn't like. Bump, knocking people out of the way, you know. Yeah. So it does help that you can dance, yeah. though. I mean, but but okay. Even if I couldn't, people would just be laughing, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, it would still it would still be a great experience for myself yeah. and probably those watching, whether I can dance or not. They'd have a go. What? Yeah. He's a bit of a nutter, you know. Um, or why is he so happy? Or maybe he's yeah. drunk or what? He's on drugs. But people would just. <laughs> oh, that's something quite delightful to see. Totally. Um, it doesn't go on for too long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, but you're so right. It's like you know, why don't we do more of those things? Like you know, just just like like it's just going back to being present, being in the moment, and just uh, doing something that makes you happy, like and and is fun, is so important. And yes. yeah, so so Daryl, like you know, we we want to find out more about this awesome book that you have coming out, right? Uh, Animal Moves and. And I can tell you or and tell the listeners that that literally when you first started, like I still remember your like your first uh, website and these, all, all these articles are still on there. You used to publish your daily uh, workouts and things like that. And I used to copy them to a T. Uh, I was in the gym doing my bear crawls and my crab walks and I was getting guys involved too. Like I had yeah. I had three guys that would train with me like every morning. Uh, one guy, uh, sorry, two guys, one girl, and uh, they were like, "Oh yeah, here we go, Gareth. We're going to be doing <laughs> these crazy moves again, but we just want to go and hit the weights." I was like, "No, let's do it because it it is fun and it is going to help us with our squatting and our lifting and our whatever else, you know." Mm, um, mm. And and I used to love it, and I still do. Like I still feel like that's my most kind of happy innate kind of feeling it's just when i do that it's really really cool um so Mm. do you just want to tell us more about you know the book that you have coming out and you know what it's about etc yeah so i've been doing animal moves now for probably about uh 10 years so i'd say um you know started off with bear crawls started off with like you know this kind of these natural movements these movements that we you know very rarely engage in as an adult um and once you once you just recognize the fact that everything we do should be full body movements it's very difficult for us to move in isolation 
you know, something is connected to something else. You know, everything is working uh, within partnership along in some way, shape or form. And so when we exercise, when, we, when we're training, we should train in, in that way. Uh, so that's the first point. You know, we should be focusing on movement first, not not muscles. Uh, secondly, is we need a, a such a significant variety of movement that it's so hard to do to think about what well, what are all the things that I, is my body capable of that I need to focus on. What are all the movement patterns that I should be engaging in? So using animals as a as a template and tr- and moving like like different animals will ensure that your whole body will move in three dimensions, varied intensity, uh, different types of movement patterns, so from very, very slow to very, very quick, uh, you know, will involve, um, you know, supporting your body weight in, in lots of different ways. And we'll also ensure that you're focusing on lots of different components of fitness. So I can focus on improving my balance and coordination and agility, but also my strength, my power, my endurance, my muscular endurance, you know, um, all these things can be can be worked on using the animal kingdom as inspiration. So I wanted to be able to design a program whereby if I only did animal moves and nothing else, that's all I did, I would pretty much tick every single box available on what I would need from a fitness program. You know, with rest and recovery days, with days of exploration, with days of high intensity with days where I'm focusing my strength and power, with days where I'm focusing much more on kind of flow and kind of mindful and meditative movement, on days where I'm thinking about cooperation with others and playing actual games, um, with utilizing the environment around you. You know, I can crawl over my sofa. I can, <laughs> I mean, <Yeah. laughs> I can jump like a kangaroo. I can walk like a like a cat and crawl like a lizard, you know. So, so just using my imagination and creating some sort of structure around that and having a program that I can guarantee if you follow that program, even as a beginner, you'll be far more capable within 20 days than, than not doing so. Do you know what I mean? You'll be covering all the bases. You'll make sure you'll have an experience as to where your, your weaknesses are and where your strengths are. Um, you know, you can find out, you know, you can find your own superpowers. I mean, you can find out who your superhero is in within yourself. You can find out what your kryptonite is. You know, why am I so? Why why I have, do I have a struggle doing such and such? You know, what is it about this? Is it because I just haven't done it before for a long time, or is it because it's a genuine weakness that I may never be, never be able to overcome, but I need to be able to do the best that I can in relation to it? So there's lots of questions you will ask yourself undergoing this program. And um, that probably finally, to, to underwrite all of that is to say that we don't realize as humans what our strength is when it comes to movement. And so what we think our strengths are tend to be what we're best at, i.e., mm. I'm, pretty, I'm pretty strong, so I'm going to do lots of heavy lifting. That's my strength. And I'm going to get stronger and stronger. I'm going to train in that way. Or, you know, I'm a runner. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm very good at endurance events. I'm going to focus on endurance. And then, you know what? I don't want to just run. I'm going to bike. I'm going to swim. So I'm going to be a triathlete. That's what I'm going to focus on. I'm going to be a sm- specialist of movement. But humans are really poor specialists of movements. The best, the best of us, you know, the best sprinter. So Usain Bolt, one of the best sprinters ever, is extremely slow in comparison to a cheetah. Mm-hmm. Uh, in comparison, even to a camel. A camel can out can out sprint. Usain Bolt, uh, a mountain, a mountain goat at its best, <laughs> out sprint Usain Bolt. Wow! Right, a flea can jump, you know, a thousand times its 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 height. You know, I mean, ridiculous. I mean, it's probably a hundred times, yeah. but significant, yeah. <laughs> significant distances. A kangaroo can jump far further than a human being. You know, power weight distribution. Uh, you know, we we are te- we're terrible at movement. We can't <laughs> climb that well in comparison, say, a monkey. You know. Uh, but what we do have is the ability to do all of those movement patterns averagely. And that's our, that's our strength. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So we can sprint, we can run, we can walk great distances, we can lift and carry stuff, we can crawl, crawl we can swim, we can jump. You know, we can do all of these movement patterns, just not very well, <laughs> apart from walking. <laughs> <laughs> and we do excel at walking. But... Uh, 
that's what we don't realize when it comes to fitness and movement. That if we become movement generalists, which is what we were designed to do, if we stay within that, we're less likely to be injured. We're less likely to have repetitive stress uh, on, you know, on our joints. We're more likely to have longevity from our movement practice. And we're more likely to be an all-rounder when it comes to our function and capability of, with movement. You know, we're more likely, we're not going to get out of breath taking the stairs because we're just in the gym lifting weights all the time. You know, we're not going to be too weak to carry shopping bags because we're just great at running long distances and we just don't have enough muscle mass to carry a couple of shopping bags. You know, we're not going to get to the stage where we can't lift ourselves out of our, out of our chair because we've been sedentary sitting in a couch all day, you know, sitting in a chair all day doing nothing. And then the one day that we rely on our ability to pick ourselves up out of the chair, we can't because we're not strong enough, you know? Yeah. So we lose balance and we, we you know, fracture a wrist because we fall over because we start losing our balance ability. So by doing all of these components of fitness, by focusing on all these movement patterns, you will be more human. So train like an animal to become more human. <laughs> so awesome. It's uh, what the book is about. So sorry for the very long... Uh, no, no, <laughs> no, 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 it's cool. It's really I love the aspect of, of exploring your weaknesses through movement and... Uh, and also your strength. It's such a really, really cool uh, sort of way of, of once again exploring and, and using a structured way of doing so so that you can explore all different kinds specifically guided by someone uh, to specifically expose those areas um, uh, of your that you need to work on that um, so that you become that all-rounder that we need to actually be, uh, which is yes. really cool. But yeah, if, so, so be I'm, all trades. You know, yeah. we shouldn't be embarrassed yeah. about being a jack of all trades and a master of none. And totally. we should also be able to embrace our weaknesses. So Superman, as capable as that guy is, right? I mean, just think of the things that guy Superman can do. <laughs> Fly, stronger than anything else, on, you know, <laughs> that exists anywhere. I mean, you know, just faster than a speeding bullet, blah, 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 blah. But kryptonite makes him, you know, can kill him, makes him pathetically weak. You could sneeze next to him and he would fall over <laughs> based on him him being you know succumbing to, to kryptonite but he embraces that he's aware of that of that fact you know he doesn't pretend yeah. that no 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 it, kryptonite doesn't affect me because i'm superman okay. <laughs> you, know I mean? yeah. you know what i mean yeah, yeah. So, so we need to do the same like yeah recognize our strengths exploit our strengths but also recognize our weaknesses recognize when there are some things that are, are, are beyond us that no matter how much we train for it will never be it will never be us you know it's impossible Superman cannot combat kryptonite. If he's exposed to it, there's nothing he can do. He can only avoid it. And that's another lesson that I've learned. Mm. Being childlike again, actually thinking about thinking about my superheroes and actually recognizing what, what's really important about them, which is the fact that they do have all of these strengths, but they also have significant weaknesses. Mm -hmm. and, and they may struggle with them, but they are, they are aware of them. Yeah. Uh, and people will try, will try and take advantage of them. You know, their alter egos will try and take advantage of those weaknesses. Mm -hmm. And I need to do the same, I, rec I realize now, um, that, yeah, I do have lots of strengths. I do have weaknesses, which can be um, a diff difficult to overcome and to embrace. But I need to, yeah. because that will make us better human beings. So, yeah, I want to make sure I got that po point across. And, yeah, yeah. and so in terms of the book, is it, is it just like a, a program? Um, or is there, there are, there's more to it? I'm sure. Like, it, what, so yeah, so it it's it's basically a 28 it's a 28 day program. Yeah. For for beginners, intermediates, and advanced. So it's in effect like 12 weeks in total if you start as a beginner. Cool. Uh, it also discusses the some of the philosophies around why we should be training as an, an animal, why we should be engaging in in quadrupedal movements, in crawling movements, what it does for the brain. It, it discusses a lot of research about this. So for some people. It just sounds like a bit of a joke. Animal moves, haha, that's a bit of fun. Yeah. But I have lots of evidence within that book as suggesting as to why these movement patterns, why these intensities are important, how much we should be doing, how we should be getting adequate rest and recovery. So I contain, there's a heavy dose of science as well um, and philosophy around primal play and animal movements in general. And then a way of taking people through a structured program to ensure that they're not overtraining, um, to ensure that it's a, it's a, it's a, you know, there's a prerequisite of it being a challenge for them and a way to assess where they should be starting out. So most people should be beginners, 
Um, but yeah. I rest assured some people are going to be like, hell no, I'm a, I'm definitely advanced. <laughs> Yeah. dive in and then they're going to realize maybe not <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> give people a way to assess what, what their starting point should be a way to assess how they can judge how hard they're working which i think is also important how do i know i'm doing high intensity interval training what how can i detect that you know do i measure my heart rate that may not be a good way uh, you know an accurate way of doing so so i give people an easy way of assessing what they how they how hard they're working when they should be deciding, you know what, I probably need another day's rest, even though Dal was telling me I should do the next day, maybe now's the time for me to rest based on some of the prescriptions in the book. Um, and I, I suppose I'm, I want to give people an opportunity to have more fun with movement as well. So I do have some structured components, but I also have some unstructured, just go out and have some fun days. Mm, yeah. Well, I'll give you a few pointers, but actually I'm, I'm more interested in you going – yeah, Dow was said to climb a tree today, you know, or he said to me, he said, you know, dance like you've, you know, listen to a song you listened to as a teenager, as we spoke to, spoke about earlier. I put that in the book. I'm like, you know what, today, find that favorite song that you played over and over again that made you f- feel great about yourself that probably <laughs> no one else knows about. You know what I mean? You, 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 you lock your bedroom door and you dance like crazy. You were like, next time I go to that, to that party i'm going to impress that girl or guy <laughs> but you never ever showed it to anyone you know what i mean <laughs> just yeah, stay yeah. in that bedroom <laughs> do that sort of stuff do it again like reminisce and have nostalgia have some fun explore movement look at your world around you as, your, as a gym you know you know look at your front room as a gym whatever it takes for you to just break out of this conventional space this box that mm. we always re- reside in break out of that so um so yeah there's a lot there's a lot within that book a uh, lot more than um what's suggested in the title yeah you know it's so a is movement it... program it is a fitness program but it's actually a a way of you reevaluating what movement should be for you and 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 how you should approach movement going forward so awesome. daryl who, who's this book for who's your Who's going to be the person standing in the bookstore and going, geez, I want to buy a book and, and what's going to, are there people that are really active that are trying to explore new ways of moving or, or can you maybe give us a little bit more? Uh, um, sort of... Probably, I mean, you know, probably somebody who is interested in doing something different. I mean, that's always, that's always a good reason to try, try something new. Yeah. You know, something a bit novel, something a bit interesting, um, something where you want people to go, hey, what, what are you doing? You know, some people like that. They like to be asked why <laughs> they're doing stuff. That's a bit yeah. crazy. I wanna, tell me about it. Yeah. Um, for others, it's going to be the fact that they know they're going to get a very robust, uh, uh, very inclusive, holistic movement program. Yeah. Um, and that it is really focusing on movement rather than just exercise. And I suppose it's also for people who find it difficult to get started. You know, they yeah. want to, I, they want to convince her. So that convincer might be some of the research. You know, I want to be convinced that this is the right way to go. So they might mm. want the research. They may want to have some testimonials as to why this is, this is great. Or they may just need to experience something because it is, it is something a bit quirky. So yeah, moving off and moving like an animal, that's something whereby I think I'm going to have some fun, you know, maybe with the kids, you know, maybe with yeah. my friend who will bear crawl in the park. That sounds like, that sounds great. Mm. So yeah, though it's anyone who's interested in exploring uh, novel ways to move and recognizes that whatever they're doing now isn't fulfilling enough. And I'm not saying that this book will be the ultimate in, it's the only thing you ever have to do. Uh, but what I'm saying is that it's definitely will be a springboard it will definitely help you to recognize that whatever you're doing now isn't enough, whatever you're doing, because we should be doing more of more, you know, (laughs) that's, you know, we should be, we should be adding more variety to our, our movement practice. We may need to add more intensity. We may need to slow things down. If we just go, 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 go all the time, then we may need to incorporate more mindful and meditative approaches, more slow flow based movement practices, as well if we you know if we're just doing endurance work we need to make sure we're doing some short shorter distance higher intensity um if we're just doing strength work we need to make sure that we're you know allowing our our muscles to be become more elastic and fluid rather than just tight and constricted mm. you know so we shouldn't be walking like gorillas 
you know, <laughs> the gorillas are gorillas. <laughs> Uh, so human beings that look like them, which again looks can look great on stage, <laughs> can look great for a bouncer, you know, can look very intimidating. But it's definitely going to have an impact on on how well you move. You know, it is going to have an impact on the fact that you're going to struggle to put your your clothing on. You know, you're not going to be very flexible. You you know what I'm saying? Yeah, totally. So 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 yeah, we need all we need all of that. You know, we're Homo sapien sapiens for a reason. You know, yeah. it's been a long time since we were Homo erectus. We yeah. should be standing up nice and tall and straight. And <laughs> anyway, yeah, for sure. So, so, so yeah, we should become more human. And by yeah. being more human, means that we should be able to be adept at at all of those uh, fitness trades that we're jack of all of them and masters of none. And that's my Makes goal. Yeah. You know, that would be my ideal position to be kind of like average. At everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so Daryl, like a, a month after this book is launched, I'm going to be like walking in the London parks and see people jumping between trees doing the squirrel movements. Or <laughs> something like that. I hope. So. You know what? I hope. I hope it's going to start a, a movement, so yeah. to speak. And I and I will be doing. A, I will be having a social media uh, kind of program to to kind of promote to m- promote the book and promote people doing animal movements in like in strange locations in like, you know, yeah. maybe having spreading some kind of competitions, some social media competitions. So I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping we can just let people see that this is normal. It's normal to move in this way because it's, it's movements that we can engage in and that, and that they're helpful to us and that it may, they may look a bit strange, but it's only because we're not used to them. You know, com- uh, jogging, jogging was, didn't exist before the late 1960s, early 1970s. Did not exist. People did not recreationally run. <laughs> didn't, didn't happen. You ran if you were an athlete. That's what happened. And as, as, as uh, you know, running became more popular, somebody coined the term jogging because it's like, it's not, it's not like running because that's too hard. You can, if you just <laughs> really, really, really slowly, then that's called jogging. <laughs> and then you know shoes were built for it it became something that people did and then you didn't decide to carry on to run if you saw somebody jogging because that would have happened probably in the 40s if you saw somebody jogging you'd be like oh my gosh what's happening where's the fire what? <laughs> but now you just see somebody jogging and you go oh they're going for a jog yeah so yeah. It's, it's become it's become normal it's not unusual to see people running uh but if you were an alien who was observing you know the earth and you came down and you saw people jogging you'd probably be like what are those people running from? That's so weird. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Eh? <laughs> what are they running from? Where they're running to? Because there's no danger. You know, they're not running from danger, and there's <laughs> if they're running towards. You know? yeah. So, so it 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 just depends on the context, right? Mm. What seems what's normal. So, me bear crawling down the street, down my high street, is pretty <laughs> unusual. But people have seen do it so often now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, there's that there's that crazy guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so hopefully there'll be more crazy guys and girls. Uh, yeah. wherever they live, will be doing some of these animal moves, um, getting their kids involved, letting their kids realise that it's okay to, to move and and you know, get outside and move and whether you have access to outdoor spaces or not, you can do this sort of stuff anywhere. Don't need a gym, mm, yeah. don't need gym equipment. Your best gym equipment you have is your is your human body. That's the best that you have. And we need to, again, being present and mindful, we need to make the most of what we have. We need to appreciate what we have. Totally. We need to appreciate what we can do because there will become a top point in time when either we won't have it anymore because it will be long gone or yeah. we'll start to lose our ability and then we'll be like, why didn't I spend time harnessing what I had? You know what I mean? Yeah. Why did I not utilize that potential? Oh, my goodness. You know, I'm now in pain yeah. and I can't. There's nothing yeah. I can do about it can't go back so whilst we have this wonderful remarkable body that we have regardless of of our of our function whatever that function is for you whatever you can and can't do make the most you know make the most of Mm. that yeah definitely and i think what the cool thing is daryl is that like people are generally curious you know and they like to do new things and different things and stuff and that's why i think this book is such an important book you know because there is so much of like the normal stuff out there about, you know, hitting weights or whatever the story is. 
Um, and, and people are looking for new and exciting things to do and also a fun and enjoyable way to move and do exercise. Like that's, that's the biggest thing. Like I, I was speaking to a friend this week and she's like, yeah, I'm, I'm coming to the end of my 90 day program and I cannot wait for Saturday because then it's finished yeah. and now I can go back to eating like what I want. You know what I mean? And, and I'm like, yeah. I know that feeling because I've done that too, but <laughs> but that's not really what it's supposed to be about. You know what I mean? It's supposed to yes. be like, oh, I'm sad I'm finishing my my 90 days of uh, animal moves because <laughs> now what? You know, what's the next one? Is yeah. Daryl going to do one that's like in the water or, you know, in the air? Like, you know, I don't know. Do you know what I mean? Like what's yeah. the... Yeah, bird, so, bird moves. Yeah, yeah, totally. Bird yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dolphin moves, a fish, fish moves. Yeah, dolphin. Moves. There yeah. you go, dolphin. That'd yeah. be cool. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, yeah. I think I think you're right. There needs to be, you know, humans are not designed to burn calories, um, you know, unnecessarily, you know, like uh, voluntary. You know, like, oh yeah, let's just go and exercise. Let's just, oh, let's just go and burn calories because it's fun. No, we are designed to conserve energy because we don't know when the next meal is coming from. So we're kind of designed to be lazy. We are designed to sit down and do nothing. That's what we're designed to do. Yeah. So we know that if we do that, we it's harmful to us in the 21st century, which is why we exercise. We know that if we don't do that, we're not likely to have the body composition that we want. So we exercise, you know. These are the reasons why. So we know that it's painful oftentimes. It's a chore to do these programs, but we know we're going to get the results, hopefully get the result that we want. We don't have the drivers that we used to. Before, there was no there was no way out. If you don't move from your seated location, there's no food coming to you, my friend. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> if you stay there, you're going to be exposed to the elements. So you need to build some shelter, my friend. We don't have those, you know, we don't have a requirement for that anymore. So I can see... You know, I understand why we find exercise really difficult to maintain long term. We, we go through life having lots of relationships with exercise, I feel. You know, I mean, sometimes some brief dalliances like one night stands, you know, one day commitments, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes a bit more longer term, you know, a lot frequent divorces and splitting up. Uh, <laughs> and yeah. if you're really lucky, you might have a lifelong relationship with movement and you're like, wow, I, I found my love of my life with movement and I've kept yeah. it going. But that's rare for people to find, yeah. you know. Um, so we need to find something that's going to be less pain and, and more, more gain, you know, more pleasure, mm. more playful, more enticing a prospect. So like your friend will say, oh, my goodness, 90 days are up and I'm so upset about it. Yeah. You know, I wish I could go back to the beginning, but I can, but I'm not looking forward to it. You know what I mean? Like yeah, I totally that's agree. not. I'm happy with the results, but as you know yourself, Gareth, like, yeah, you can take a great photo at the end, amazing transformation, but you can't, you know, we can't maintain that. Totally. You know, there's a reason why our body goes, you know, we have to go through those cycles to look great, you know, the, what we believe to be really amazing. Yeah. You know, we've got to go through these cycles of like, you know, <sighs> perfection, yeah. you know, ideal lighting. You know, just eating turkey breasts every couple of hours. You know, <laughs> like, don't want to get all the water out of me as possible yeah. to then re-overfeeding and like, now I can enjoy myself and eat whatever I want. And then, oh, no, I've got to try really hard again. <laughs> yeah, bad, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, yeah, yeah we, 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 I'd rather have a, a maintenance, be in maintenance mode where, fine, I may not look, I may not win many uh, cover magazines, but um, I'm kind of okay with myself. I'm happy with the way I look. I don't have body dysmorphia issues. I look healthy, and I'm likely to maintain a good health and well-being uh, for as long as I possibly can. And then and sustainably, live, yeah. Live long and 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 drop dead is what why what I hope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Quote of the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. They're cool. Yeah. Exactly. It's all about that longevity, eh? And so, Daryl, uh, just to kind of um, wrap things up, the the best way for people to find out about you, uh, to to get hold of the book, and then also there's there's a way I guess they can have like a little. Uh, starter of it they can sign up on your website just to check out what it's all about do you want to give us those details yeah so um the book is launched uh i, I you know is has launched on april 17th 
Um, uh, is, that, is, it, is it will be launched or has launched? I'm sure you can edit this out, right? Yeah, yeah no worries. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so, so the book uh, will launch April 17th cool. or has launched April 17th. <laughs> cool. <laughs> <laughs> the beauty of editing. <laughs> and um, you can get hold of me at primalplay.com. So that's the best place to look at some of the research uh, around Primal Play and everything that Primal Play is, is, is about. Uh, I also produce courses, online courses around Primal Play and Animal Moves. So if the book, if you want more than the book, or you want to have some videos taking you through some Animal Moves programs, that's all available on the website. And uh, that kind of range of courses is expanding. So there's going to be more courses on food. I've got courses on sleep and, and kind of lifestyle habits uh, as well. And you can get hold of me on social media at Fitness Explorer, or just search for Daryl Edwards, D A W R Y L Edwards, on Google. And um, unfortunately, now I've managed to, like, you know, supplant people on Google so they actually find me rather than some obscure, you know, um, <laughs> other person. Some, yeah, some, yeah, some obscure zoologist okay, from Philadelphia. Yeah. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> cool, man. Yeah, Daryl, that's, yeah. You, you know, that's, uh, it's been such a cool chat. You know what I mean? Like, every time. I end. I finish a chat with you. I like feel like I'm just full, like full of awesome information, uh, full of like energy. You have this cool like charisma and way of talking, and you know just way about you, which which is really really cool, man. And uh, and I feel oh, like you. I feel like you know I feel like that after every single chat, basically. And oh, you know, I'm sure that the guys that go on your courses and everything feel the exact same way. And I, and I literally have no doubt that this is going to be such a, a great success. You know, it, at the mm. end of the day, it's also still early days. You know what I mean? So there's, there's tons more time for this to, to lift off. And I totally, I'm totally engaged with it. And I know I said it last time that yeah. I was going to do your certification course. <laughs> and I, I promise you that it hasn't changed. Um, um, just, you know, yeah, there was other things going on. Um, but yeah, just, just to say a massive thanks, like you always give us so much, you know, I feel like, I just feel like there was, it was such a great chat, you know, like, and we literally could have carried on for, for like, you know, much longer. <laughs> and, and I know that we're definitely going to chat to you again in the future because there's so much going on in your world and, you know, stuff that is going to be really exciting to talk about that we, you know, we want uh, people to know about, you know, and, and it's things that people are interested in too. So yeah, just, uh, really, really excited to always chat to you and thanks for, thanks for just sort of, you know, departing your knowledge on us. And it's, it's always done in such a cool way. And, uh, we, oh, thank we you. just, uh, yeah, we just wish you all the best, man. And, um, yeah. Well, well, I definitely, I tell you what, Gareth, I definitely, uh, prefer the new you to the old you. So, uh, there we go. <laughs> thanks man. <laughs> far more, char far more charming a character now, mate. So there thanks. You go. Thank That's you. Yoga course, it. Mate. That's the, uh, yeah. <laughs> but also just from my side, uh, Daryl, just, you know, thank you so much. Honestly, we could have a podcast for each individual part of the chat that we spoke about today. And, um, I'd love to, get down into some of the nitty gritties one day with you and, you know, have a Q and a maybe or something like that. Cause there's so many interesting facets and uh, avenues that, that you could take us down uh, in, in so many ways. The human body uh, is so interesting and, and, you know, you just a wealth of information. So uh, I just thought I'd, before we ended, I want to give you a quick anecdote. Uh, yesterday uh, I was, really lazy my, my partner as well we were just had a long long week and we didn't really feel like exercising and you know i was like you know what uh we, tomorrow we be having a chat with uh with daryl edwards and uh we're gonna just get some have some fun so i, I found this ball that i had like just i don't know where i found it actually and and we were, we, we've got this sort of area in the house in the carpet and I said, we're going to just have fun because that's in the spirit of our chat tomorrow. And we kind of just flew through the ball and we just said, this is going to be our warm up, right? Mm -hmm. And so we flew the, through the ball to each other and we played these made games up with the ball. And like an hour and a bit later, <laughs> we're like, oh, that was meant to be the warm up. And we're like, how much fun was that? That's and so we didn't cool. even like, there wasn't a moment of like, we forgot how tired and how long the week was and all that rubbish. Yeah. 
and yeah. uh, and we were like, okay, cool. Well, we've we just had like an hour and a half of fun, and it was really <laughs> awesome. So thank you. You are influencing others. Uh, oh, that's and, great. Uh, and and it's uh, I think uh, like I said earlier, there's a big groundswell, and we're excited to see where you're going. I feel I finished this chat like full of sort of hope as well and excitement. So I'm excited for the human race and for us being healthier and living happier communities together. And so, and you're part of that movement. So thank you so much. And uh, we oh, look thank forward you so to much. You. Yeah. Well, I, I feel great now as well. I feel like I can, I can, I'm going to go back to sleep and <laughs> wrap myself up in the, in the compliments. You've given. So, uh, <laughs> oh, that's cool, man. <laughs> you know, but thank right. you so much. It's been a pleasure. Uh, yeah. I know it's, um, I'm hoping you can edit it, edit this down quite a bit because I know it's a very long podcast, but, uh, <laughs> but no, thanks. Thanks so much for a wonderful right. time, guys. Cool. Thank you so yeah. much, bud. Cheers. Man. <laughs>